him? need gloves oh that's right okay the court doesn't have blankets to hand out to everybody no i was i was about to suggest that everybody can keep their jackets on <laughs> all rise for the jury please Thank you. You may all be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358 People versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. When we took our break, we were in the midst of a testimony from Mr. Grusing. That's where we will resume. Mr. Allen. Thank you, Your Honor. And, and just so that we're on the same page as far as the record, we just listened to a and watched a portion of the interview from uh, timestamps. One hour, one minute, 20 second through one hour, 26 minutes and 58 seconds. Um, in the beginning of this portion of the interview, um, you asked the defendant to describe um, that fire uh, in the basement. Do you remember that? Yes. She gives you some extraneous information there, uh, specifically like Kobe Bryant. Um, was it consistent that when you would start getting into particular points of interest as it relates to the alleged crimes here that she would give these extraneous details? Yes, and that was consistent through the phone calls as well. In your, from your perspective, uh, was that another distraction attempt to sort of create these tangents off of the main path of uh, what you're trying to drive towards? Yes. Cell phone, please. Apparently the cell phone wants me to repeat it, Judge. I don't know. <clears throat> uh, you had asked about details about this fire um, in this particular portion in like color of flame, those height of the flames. Why were you asking those questions? Well, as I explained before the video, the candle was a significant incident. Uh, she had been talking about that since February 13th that I came on that Gannon sustained uh, serious burns from that that caused him even to bleed and I wanted to see how she described the, not only the candle but the fire itself and how he was injured. <clears throat> what was your perspective of that either reluctance or unwillingness to share details of the fire the the, the colors of the flames the height of the flames uh, why why is that potentially significant to you in this interview? Well, I tried multiple times to get her to explain to me what she saw. And I, I tried to give her different prompts on maybe even motioning with her hand how tall it might be or how hot it was or colors. And she was not comfortable doing that. Okay. There was also discussion about the burns on Gannon. Um, she describes on one hand that there were little burns on his arms and then says by Monday they're peeling. Um, any significance to that for you that seems to be some divergent um, statements as to the severity of these burns? Yes, in our phone call on February 13th, she was saying that Gannon was peeling and peeling his burns and that they were very bloody. And that's a lot different from how she was describing those to me in this interview. In that particular, and you're referring back to a different one of these recorded calls that we listened to. Correct. Um, did that appear to be, from your perspective, a way to explain why there would be blood on his walls and in his bedroom? Yes. So again, to explain away important details in the investigation? Yes. In this particular uh, discussion of the fire in the basement, um, she gives a long description about opening windows and how people are sleeping upstairs, everybody is, but then Gannon ends up downstairs. Uh, did that appear to be um, an isolation of Gannon um, based on the way you're hearing that? Yeah, it didn't make sense uh, to me at the time on why he would be that back down there, but I decided not to press it. Um, does that also, um, I guess, building on that, the fact that she describes all the windows being opened, we're talking about 
mid to late January, likely very cold in there. Uh, was that significant at all to you? Yeah, I wasn't really taking in all of that, uh, but uh, I didn't think from talking with El Paso, the sheriff's office, that there was such a cause for so much smoke and inhalation and windows being opened. So. Okay. Um, next, I want to ask you about um, during this interview, did you ask her about um, whether she went to work on that Monday, January 27th? Yes, I did. Okay. So we're going to jump to one hour, 27 minutes um, flat. And we're going to play from one hour, 27 minutes to one hour, 29 minutes and 42 seconds. What I did was I said, um, I told Albert, I said, hey, I'll just stay at home. Um, but the plan was I wasn't at Walmart. That was like the plan was the other So starting, when was that a plan? I don't think that was in December, so I was just going to try to use like days to try to, you know, whatever, because I didn't feel like. Right. What did you tell your school as far as why you didn't show up that day? Or that day, I didn't talk to them about anything. Your school, you didn't. Mm -mm, did didn't. you just not show? Were you have classes waiting on you? Or? No, 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 no. The okay. So what happened was I transitioned because I was like, okay, I was like, oh, teacher anymore. And then I was like, okay, I have to do something until this like, whole part is in sync. Right? So I had to do something in to just not mm -hmm. have money or whatever. So I got on D A D. I would do a long term self position or I would do the regular self position. And then, so then I just, at that point, it was going to just call in whenever I could work. You know, I have mm -hmm. in my email. Um, I could just call in whenever I worked. So yeah. were you scheduled to show up then Monday morning? From the school that I wasn't going to work at anymore. I didn't even complete paperwork with them yet. So it wasn't even, I wasn't They weren't even, counting on you to show up that day or work there. What do you mean? But I had, like, I hadn't signed any contracts. I hadn't, like, done anything with them because the whole plan was I was not going to be teaching. Okay. Like, yeah, I like, get you didn't sign contracts, but were they planning for you to come in to do something on Monday and you had to call in? I, I never called in on Monday. I'd already Did told them. Did you text down or something? No, on Thursday or Friday, I'd already you told them. them. Oh, okay. On Thursday or Friday, I'd already told them that I wasn't coming in. Like for, I didn't go in Friday either. Like I'd already told them I wasn't. So it was like, you're asking me about if I told them Monday, but mm -hmm. I'd already told them prior. That oh, I you'd already in. told them, so you didn't have to tell them you're not coming in on Monday. Right, because I'd already told them because, see, on my dad's side, there was someone who passed away. So I wanted to make sure I wasn't coming in. The following, the prior week. So that's. So, Mr. Bruising, um, when she's giving you this answer, what information did you have already about uh, her employment on that Monday? I had, I think in the 4 o'clock a.m. hour, she had texted to say one of her relatives had got hit by a car and was killed, and that's why she was not coming into work. And the way that she's describing it, it sounds like she's saying that this was a text that she sent the previous week to a different school as opposed to the one that she was now supposed to work at on Monday, January 27th. That's correct. <clears throat> what was uh, significant of that to you? I was attempting to walk her through her own timeline that she had provided us on uh, the, the Sunday night burn injuries and then what happened Monday morning. And that was the next logical thing that she should have been describing to, uh, to me. And then, okay. like you said, she put it back on either Thursday or Friday. Okay. <clears throat> the reason that she um, gives in that portion of the interview is that uh, she didn't want to go back into teaching, right? Yes. Um, did, 
Did she ever say in this part of the interview or any other part of the interview or phone calls um, having any sort of mental health anxiety issues as it related to teaching? Not that I listened to, no. Um, was it more along the lines of she was just not happy in teaching because of the current environment in schools? Yes. Following that portion of the discussion, did you ask her to give you um, a statement about what happens on Monday, January 27th? I did. Does she then, in, in her answer, is this where she um, asks you, I'm going to need some help from you? Yes. All right, Your Honor, we're going to jump to one hour, 32 minutes, and 47 seconds and play through one hour, 46 minutes, and 45 seconds. Thanks. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. So tell me about the next morning. So now you're at home, Gannon's at home, right. Elena's at school. Tell me what happens now. Right. So this is where I need help from everybody. Yeah. And you can get help. Like I said, I've had some high level informants that have told me some horrific things, and we've had to relocate them. We can get different names. But to do that, to kick that in motion, we need to know the story. We can't just say, Right. Oh, so someone some got really important information. Right. Well, that's where I would need someone to help guide me through this because I want to help more than anything. But that's I'm, why I'm here because I'm representing I'm representing Denver FBI, right. and then I have the ability to pull resources from Quantico, which is our behavior analysis unit. Everything comes out of there. Right. It's called CERD, which is our incident response group. So this was this was a big enough case that the supervisor of the FBI asked me to come down from Denver, you know, and I get all my training out there. So right. you thought that you're not going to have better resources in this room right now. And I'm not bragging. Right. I've just been doing this stuff for a long time. Right. So if if you tell me what happened, and then you need protection, we can do all that stuff. DEA doesn't have those capabilities, ATF doesn't, mm -hmm. no. DEA just investigates drugs, and they're very good at it. Right. If the FBI were now worldwide, and we have offices over to Russia, to China, to wherever, right. so we get a lot more funding because of, when September 11th happened, that changed everything for us. We, we, we were the nation's number one law enforcement agency before then, mm -hmm. but they gave us so many more resources since then. Right. And so I am specialized in missing kids um, and unusual homicides, including serial killings and whatever else. So I didn't get in right away on your case, but I did. I have been working it for the past couple of weeks. Yeah, well, I'm here now, and whatever you tell me, what I mean, the worst thing I can do for people like you is if you have a story that requires your protection for the FBI, it would not be good for me to run out and say, oh, Leticia told me this, and that's not how it works. If this can help us find Gannon, we'll do yeah. whatever we can. Okay. Not like, I'm just, I just need like protection for the thing. Okay, well, you can get that, but we have to know the story first. So how, how am I supposed to get help talking to someone first before we talk to you? Because I'm willing to do that. Oh, here's your deal. If if you need help, and, and if you want to go through the court process, that's fine. We leave, and then you, you work through the court process. But then it just becomes the, the whole focus of this, Leticia, right now you're the only one. You're the last one. You're the last adult with him. You're the last adult we know about with him. You have not told anybody anything else to lead us. We have been trying to work with Al to say, what is she saying now? Yeah. You know, and the Quincy Brown thing and yeah. whatever else. I was and, mad at him about all that. It, but a lot, a lot of it was key to help me. But it should have been. I could have just re like, reached out to someone to be, like, terrified for 
You know what I'm saying? And also, what I can help you with can also help you with something else. You might want to work with. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. I. Well, Leticia, you've got to give me something here to work to work with. If if you want to go through the court process, like I said on here, the last question. If you want to stop at any time, you are more than welcome to stop and say. I'm but it done. says it says you can have one present to talk to you. Yep. And that will kick in the court process, and then we're done, which is fine. And if that's what you want, okay. But the whole. If you need protection and that sort of thing, I can't get you there without you giving me something. So here's I listen to all the calls with Al. And I've seen the crime scene reports. Mm -hmm. Okay. What happened in the bedroom was not Gannon slinging his blood on the wall. Well, that that's totally like not even to do with anything. Yeah, that's but, why I'm so like upset about bedrooms and, and, and all those things. Because I understand you're an expert. I know that. But I'm telling you that just I'm gonna need like protection. That's that's it. It's not me. I'm not the person. So if but if you're not the person, the the charges won't be different. Okay, if you allowed someone else to come in and do the things to Gannon that we know happened to him, you're just as guilty. I didn't allow anyone, and I don't know of anything like you're talking about to be happening to him. I do know that there is something I can tell you that can help you or help me help everyone. But help. Well, so let me tell you where I am. Okay. okay. Like I said, I've been 23 years with the FBI. For the last 20, I've been working violent crimes. And I've worked some of the worst cases. And okay. it kind of messed me up a little bit, to be honest, right. seeing what I've seen. Okay. And I worked 20 years of bank robberies. Mm -hmm. So for, I always thought that you were going to have, I'm the FBI, I'm the good guy, bad people go rob banks. Right. And that's not how it is. Right. I had to help arrest other FBI agents, police officers, people from the church, school resource officers. I mean, it doesn't matter what you do. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, some of the bank robbers, one of them came out after serving a 10-year sentence, and we had it off just fine, even though, you know, we were on both opposite sides of the fence. The thing that I have seen, though, throughout is when something very bad happens. People think they can't recover from it. And I do not think you are a bad person. I'm not. That's why I'm here. No, I don't. I I've, do I've, bad seen, I've seen bad people. And I people. know you told people not to get them to help you. No, I'm not. not. <laughs> I would not have this approach with you if I thought you were a bad person. I think something bad happened. And I think that what I've seen a lot, it's whether it's you think that you can get out if you do this or this or this. That's where you are now. And you're hoping that one of these things can save you. They're not going to be able. What do you mean? What were you talking about? There's no, there was nobody else there. We, we've we looked at the alarms. We've looked at the motions. We've looked at the Sir, detectors. The alarms are already covered up. The alarms were already covered yes. up. Yes. Okay. But Sir, we, I'm telling you, there, what you have... Is not you. I know you say you wouldn't sit here and say this to me if I wasn't. Whatever. I'm telling you, it is true. I would not, and did not, would not, did not. And so, with you guys having my phone, I would have thought that you would have had some of the apps looked into. Now I would have thought that sometimes when I talked to Albert and you would have listened to him or whatever, it could have been some help and indication. And I really did, because I couldn't come at you and just tell you if I, you say there's somebody not involved, I could walk you through it and prove it to you, and you guys have already had this predetermination, and I don't mean you, I mean, I'm the first time I spoke to you, you guys have already had this predetermination that that's what's going to happen. It's, it's already in your mindset. Yeah, because we have no other evidence pointing us elsewhere. Right. 
So if there was a shred of evidence, Leticia, that pointed us to some other person, we would be all at work. As soon as Quincy Brown came out of your mouth, we, it doesn't take long. So you know 100% he's in Mexico right yes, now? Yes, we do now. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Because we did get our legal, we have what's called a legal attache. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where that alone, and I get that you're saying you have someone who looks into that and knows that, that's where I know in my heart that I can't trust to get help that very least. You're saying Quincy Brown's not No, I, that's, that's not what I'm saying. But you would have said another word, like something in between that, that would have gave that off. Like, you wouldn't have said he's just in Mexico and he wouldn't do anything. You would have said, oh, did he come back here for a reason? You you wouldn't have said any of that. You would have known some other things, too. Or maybe you have and you just can't tell me those things. And that's okay. But... Well, we don't... In a case like this, so tips will come in, mm -hmm. you know, the public will call in, and then, of course, you and Al are of primary interest because you're the parents of the missing kid. And mm -hmm. most, 90% of the time, when a kid goes missing, it has to do with one of the parents. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, that we, we, work, we work on probability. Okay. So, and especially with you, then, you're there, you say he went to a neighbor's house. Okay. That's, that's the very first thing you say. And then there's no thought that somebody took him. So you said there's no thought? There's no thought for law enforcement. But you when don't even when you understand what happened leading up to the day before. Nothing to do with Gannon. Nothing to do with me. Okay? In terms of me and Gannon. I love Gannon. With all my heart. And so you can sit here and say 90% parents, this, this, this. Okay? I'm not saying you don't love him. I, I love him. I'm mm -hmm. saying that even I have had times when my son rolled the right. basketball underneath that I wanted to turn around and right. do but, something, and but, then I would have regretted it later. But you're saying, what you're saying to me is, what you think is that I hurt Cannon. And I don't Cannon. think it was intentional. Okay, but I didn't hurt Cannon. Okay. And I didn't either intentional or not intentional hurt Cannon. I did not. That's just not what happened. Okay. And I had this conversation with you just to see for a second if I could get help from you. Which you can, but you, how can you expect me to help you, Leticia, if you're not going to tell me what happened? Because you, you, you can't go, just so, so let me I'm tell sorry. you. You can unlock the entire resources of the FBI right now. I've told you that. But then you say that you're not willing to do it, whether you don't trust me or you think that there's these but people But you already involved. told me someone wasn't there based on the alarm. That's from what we can see. Yes, okay. movement in the basement, right. movement upstairs. But you've already told me that based on that, okay? But what you're not realizing is there's two sensors on that home, okay? Two. Two that can easily be manipulated, easily, okay? And if you even knew anything about prior, you would be thinking a lot differently. But see, that's why I can't talk to you about these things because you already have predetermined what it you think. It doesn't matter what I predetermined. But you listen, said intentionally, listen, unintentionally, and that's not the case. I'm not saying I'm right 100% of the time. It doesn't, you need to just disregard whatever I think or really whatever anybody else thinks. If you have a truth and if you have something that will help us find him, really to hell with me and everybody else and what we think. You should just cast that aside. All we, all I can follow is the facts of the cases they're told to me. And so for me to go somewhere else besides the facts, I have to then go back to the facts to check it. So okay. when I say something I'm like... i you in private, but you can't tell Albert about anything that led up to it or anyone else. Albert will but not I know will, anything. I understand that, but I will, but I need your help, and I need to know that you tell me there's resources, you tell me whatever. Okay, I know you're saying you got whatever, this, that, and all that, but I, I really am going to need help a lot. Where do you? Don't base it on some alarm report because they can easily manipulate it. Well, we're not just they easily were. I know I'm saying when you're saying no one else was there. So when you say that, don't base it on that, please. I'm begging you. 
because that was not even remotely. That's not even. Not even. Mr. Griffin, I'll just remind you that you're still under oath. <clears throat> At the beginning of that portion of the interview, Mr. Grusing, um, you go through a description of if you allowed somebody else to come into the house and do bad things to Gannon, then you're just as guilty. Why were you going down that path and explaining that to her? Um, well, it had to do with the numerous stories that she had told us and Al over the phone. And just whatever complicit or she was going to make uh, with me, I was wanting to move more directly towards her involvement. So just saying that if she was going to introduce yet another person, uh, like the last one that she introduced was the pregnant lady and it didn't really have any legs to stand on, we weren't, I didn't want her to go down that path again. So was, was that you trying to encourage her to talk about her actions as opposed to pointing it out to different people? Yes. Okay. What about the discussion you had where you're talking about the good guys and the bad guys dynamic and that whole thing? arresting bank robbers what was that purpose of that uh to tell Letitia basically that she was a good person and that good people can do bad things in that portion of the interview she says um she couldn't just come at you and tell you what had happened um what was your take from from that particular point of the interview well i don't i don't know if this is the same thing you're talking about but she told me that she had keys or some type of keys she was trying to give us, but that she couldn't tell us directly what happened. And to me, that meant that she had been giving us hints along uh, during the different phone calls through Al, because she had already told me that she knew that I and others were listening. That's exactly what I was talking about, where she's um, telling you basically that I've been trying to give hints throughout this whole thing. Um, were there, in fact, some hints in her various statements? Absolutely. Can you give us uh, examples of that, please? Well, she mentioned that uh, Gannon was not in Colorado in either the, the phone call on February 19th or 21st. I think it was the 19th. And then she told Al that he's not in the U.S. And we later learned that it's close to being true. Uh, she also, as we've spoken of numerous times, described the injuries and she was even describing uh, time periods that we were interested in, like the the night before the two trips to Costco and what had happened in between those two trips. And then when she would come home, what happened after uh, she arrived back at the house. And yeah, so if when you compile them all together, she was describing a lot of what had happened uh, separately through the investigation being done by El Paso County Sheriff's Office. And, and when you talk about that it was almost true that Gannon wasn't in the United States, are you referring to where Gannon was later found uh, on the essentially a banks of a river that flows into the Gulf of Mexico? Yes. Okay, down in Florida. Why did you tell her um, that you don't think it was intentional? What? And, and the way you're implying it in that statement is you don't think what she did to Gannon was intentional. Why'd you say that? Well, in her first statement that I was present for with Al on the 13th of February, she said that Gannon, Gannon's first injury in her timeline was that he cut his foot on Saturday. And then she went on to other things that had happened. And uh, in my experience with domestic violence, uh, I had seen that an accident might precede something intentional, and I was giving her the opportunity to say that if she wanted to. Was that a essentially you building it out for her to uh, feel better about telling you what actually happened again? Yes, and still just trying to find any factual information from her on injuries to Gannon when they might have occurred, and it's much easier to talk about an accident than something intentional. Okay. Um, the next section um, that I want to talk about is right after this. Uh, do you remember her talking about she reached out to people to go places? Yes. Um, let's go ahead and play that. It's at uh, timestamps 146.45 through 148.30. So going from directly from here to 148.30. 
So you care about Gannon. I care about Gannon. I have reached out every day offering for people to go into certain places to get to get even insight to see. I, I every day ask, hey, can you go do this? Can, can someone so, meet with you? So you've asked someone to go look for him? Right. Like I I reached out and I asked Albert. I said, hey, can you meet me? Let me tell you about this and let's go to this location to look. I've asked all these. What people. location do you think he's at now, Gannon? No, I'm I'm just saying like no, in general. No, but I'm asking you. In right general. Now, where do you think he is right now? I can I don't know exactly. I don't know. Well, where where do you know him to lie? But to I you? am 99% confident that Gannon is alive. Okay. Leticia, where do you know him to last be? I want to help her, but I, I'm in a room, and you've already talking about all this and the courts, and I'm it's me against everybody else. So here's the deal. Once this thing goes through the courts, you talked about that, you're the only one to be with him. You think you're going to be able to tell a story. A story? It, 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 it might be a true story. <laughs> God. But, but listen, I've listened to a lot of your stories, and I don't know what else to tell them. Yeah, okay, that's because I was mad at him. Had nothing. I already knew. But I've seen there. what you told the news reporter. I've seen what I've listened to what you told El Paso about, the, about the sex assault that happened in the oh, house. I already knew that you guys were listening to him. Yeah. So I said that because so, I was angry. But, but what I think I can offer you today is some help. Okay. So in, in the beginning of that portion, Mr. Grusing, she's talking about uh, she's been trying to reach out to get people to go places. Do you know of any effort she made to reach out to give information, factual information that could be acted on? I don't. So in this, uh, basically in, in, this, uh, in this interview, do you also go through a portion where you're Describing that you're looking at her stories and they're just not making sense. Correct. I'm going to jump to one hour, 51 minutes and 40 seconds and play one hour, 56 through one hour, 56, 24. And so I, I'm looking at your story. Uh, the ones that you've told to Al, the ones that you've said in the media of hitting your head. When you hit your head, you didn't see what happened. And then when someone else takes Gannon or when he's riding a bike and he hits his head and stuff no, like that. I didn't know, but I, was just, I just told you I was saying that to Albert because I was upset that he wasn't listening to me, that I did not hurt Gannon. I don't think you intended to hurt Gannon at all. There's no, no, I'm not saying you did, or he hurt himself. <laughs> Something bad happened in his room. No. I've, have you seen the? Sir. You've helped clean it off the wall. Sir. We know that. This here, what, what you're talking about, is completely, completely irrelevant. About the whole well, then, making mad, well, whatever. Tell, tell me about if, if it's irrelevant, Leticia. Help me. Because there's a big blood school in the corner, there's spray on the wall. Because if I tell you anything about any of that, all you're going to say to me is, hey, I don't know. If you didn't do it, no, I will be your advocate. Because why do we know each other? No, but I. Why would I care? If you didn't do it and it helps me find Gannon? I didn't do it. Okay, well then help me find out who did it. Who did what? That's a Gannon in his Don't room. Don't walk to Gannon in his room. There's a pool of blood in the corner. Okay. That's Gannon's blood. Okay. So you're saying now this is this is where I have a hard time knowing what it is. You're like, okay, trust you or not, all right? You're saying there's a pool of blood. Albert said saucer side of because I'm sure you had him say all this. I'm sure you were there, whatever. Okay. In his room, and you said something about what'd you say? What would you then, if that's your your whatever your expert advice or There's whatever, okay. Then, where where do you think that I had any involvement with Gannon, and where did he go? That's where people. That's where it has to click at some point. That 
And and that's what I listened to you do that to Al, to where you're making that. him guess what happened to Ken. I don't want him to guess. Well, no, you, well, you're, you're, you're asking me to guess. No, 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 I was asking the question, sir. I wasn't trying to guess. I was just saying in general, asking the question. I want hope with people understanding. I tried to give any insight, help, clue, anything, but I can't because they know my daughter, everyone, my family, my mom, everyone. And you can think that. But right now, Leticia, I mean, you can go down that road, but it's not going to save you in court but, because you're the last adult with him. So and nobody else, just let me, let me try to I'm protect sorry. you. I'm not trying to hurt you here. This is actually protecting you. If you don't tell us where to go investigate, mm -hmm. then nobody's going to investigate for you. You're the last adult with him. You told a lot of lies about all these injuries. From not to you. I didn't tell lies to you or to any police officer. Did a sex assault happen in the house? I didn't tell any lies to you or a police officer. So you don't have, we don't have anybody to chase, though, if we don't chase you. Do you understand? But if you chase me, okay, and you do this to me, people are protected because you guys aren't going to protect anybody. People are protected. We can protect people. We can protect you, family, if this is involved. Now, I've worked South American theft groups. I've worked gangsters. I've worked organized crime. Mm -hmm. None of that stuff rings true with what happened here. <laughs> I mean, how how is okay. how is a very organized gang going to come into a house in Colorado Springs? Who said it, a house? Why does it have to be in the house? See, that's, that's where, where he last not... was. Oh. Are you going to make me guess where he was then? No, I'm I'm telling you, you're not going to listen to me. Already just said the last was in the house. But see, you're again, you're going back to what you care what I think. You shouldn't care what I, I think. I do care what you think. You want to know why? Yep. Because I care about my how people think of me because I am not that kind of person. That's and if, why. And if you can point me to a different person, then I can help you. I gave him. So let's stop that 156.26. <clears throat> When when the discussion about the riding the bike and Quincy Brown came up, um, she stopped you and, and said, uh, basically, she gives a description of she was just saying that to Al. Remember that portion? Yes. Was that her basically admitting that what she had told in that particular story, that Quincy Brown, that whole thing was not true? Correct. What about the uh, portion of the discussion where um, you point out that are you trying to make Al guess? Or are you trying to make me guess? What was your um, intent of, of making that distinction there, and what were you trying to get to? Well, I had asked her a question about the blood in the bedroom, trying to get her to explain that to me. And instead, she posed the question to me that if she was responsible, where was Gannon? It's an open-ended question that only she knew. And as I told Leticia, I had seen her do this to Al. Well, I would heard her do it to Al while we were in the room multiple times when it's a, a direct question we need an answer or I needed one for the blood and instead she's asking me where Gannon is and she knows that I don't know the answer. Um, did it appear um, from your perspective that that was intentionally trying to not give you information as to what happened in the room or to Gannon? Yes both. Did you confront her with uh, web searches um, that were done on her phone? Yes. I'm going to jump to that portion of the interview, and this is um, one hour, 56 minutes, and 52 seconds through two hours and 10 seconds. As you know, in here, I even have what you entered in your phone, the stuff that you've entered and deleted. like. Um, Blood is spurting from an arterial bleed, direct pressure not controlling. Do what? I didn't look this up. It's from your phone. Blood is what? Spurting from an arterial bleed. No. Well, somebody did from your phone. I don't like my stepson. No. I don't like my stepson. Should I get a divorce? Stop cheating. Oh, stop 
Instagram, I'll start cheating in Colorado Springs. Catch, I'll start cheating. How to get blood out of sheets. Out of sheets? Mm-hmm. I want immunity. Well, the, blood, the blood out of sheets was because we always had, like, every, always nosebleeds. If I ever looked up blood out of sheets, it was nosebleeds. And I figured I it might never, be something. I didn't ever look up anything about an artery or something unless it went from something else. It's on your phone. And I never looked up anything about my stepson unless someone else did it. The, the reason I brought up gangs is you you uh, looked up, I want immunity because it was gang-related. And this sounds like it. You know, find me a new husband. Find me a rich guy who no, wants to take care of his kids. The, the new husband is just because he, Albert already knew that was about the lady, Debbie Cheryl, who had a who wanted to find a new husband after 35 or something. He picked me about Amazon. And like a, a lot of these can have nothing to do with this. It doesn't. I get it. Can and I spray? Is, can I spray paint wood? Spray paint wood? Well, we always spray the wood. Yeah, I'm doing all the work for my stepkids, and their mom doesn't help. Oh, that bothered me. Yeah. Yeah, I don't blame. Oh them. yes, because I wanted them to be mine. Like, like. What about <laughs> it? Need to be their child. Hit and run. You googled a lot on Leticia and traffic accidents. Hit and run. No, I didn't hit anybody. No. What was that? What What date was it? It, I don't have a date on these. I just I was downloading stuff as I was coming on the phone. Yeah, no. I my husband wants a divorce. My husband wants a baby, but I want an abortion. One day, some people will wish they treated you differently, which I get that. Parenting should be four people, not one. Quote the suicidal person might say. I mean, these make me very sad when I read them because I can see you're doing all the work at home by yourself. Which I wanted to be there. Like, I wanted to totally have the kids as my children. That's the point you're not getting. Like, I wanted those kids to be saying to me that I'm their mom. Yeah. Like, I am the person who does, it, cares for them, loves them, everything. So you can think that. What about, what do you do if you suspect a person swallowed poison? Did somebody actually swallow poison? Poison? I don't know. I always click things and read them. I wouldn't Did somebody swallow any, it? I wouldn't swallow any poison. You will never forgive me and treat me like a princess. You'll never know when it's too late. Oh, yeah. I mean, I always search for things in Albert. So in that particular portion, um, you mentioned the immunity. Was there a particular phone calls um, during the consensual recorded phone calls process where she was also saying the same thing to Al in those phone calls? Yes, there was. It was one of the earlier phone calls I was involved in. Did you ask her to describe what injuries Gannon suffered a little bit later after this? Yes. I'm going to jump to timestamp two hours and 50 seconds. And play through uh, two hours, eight minutes, and 55 seconds. Everything. If you're not willing to go with who took Gannon, can you at least tell me what injuries he suffered? The true ones, as far as the cut foot, was that a legit injury? Yes. And where did that happen? Oh, he was outside in the garage. And when he was outside in the garage, he was running to go help me take the trash, like, hey, take the trash out, come back and help me get stuff out of the car. And then he stepped on something, which I left the blood there. Like, I left it. Like, because Albert said, don't touch that fine wood or African wood, whatever kind of wood it was. What, what did the piece of wood look like? Okay. And it's still there in the garage? I, I had to drive over them all the time. So like, I always had to drive over the pieces of wood. Right. But right. you didn't take that out of the garage? It's too big. You couldn't fit it in anything. Couldn't have fit the pieces. The long boards that were in the garage, you could not fit. I left. The, okay, so there was the piece of board that I threw in the back of the truck, and then there was the two long boards that were sitting there. So the, the, the board that was about like this size, and the board that was the long boards that were sitting here. I left the long boards because I don't, those, that was supposed to be the fancy wood, and I didn't want the wood or trying to get the wood off of it. The other piece of wood, was the wood that I threw in the back of Albert's truck. And what was that one? It was, there was a bunch of pieces that were laying around that from that night, from us running through there, 
It was like little pieces. There was a piece about this size, maybe a couple pieces. But and that you threw in the back of the truck. That that bigger piece. You said bigger like this. It wasn't that big. Okay. Yeah, it was just um piece wood. Like I knew it was not the wood that he would be freaking out over. So from Sunday, that he did hurt his foot from Sunday. And how badly was it bleeding? It wasn't. I say Sunday, Saturday, I'm sorry, from Saturday. Albert had just left, like, to drive to the airport. It wasn't even, he wasn't even gone long. Mm -hmm. He had just left to drive to the airport. Okay. So, so did it require a Band-Aid? You know, when he, whenever he always does something, he tries to be, like, he's not, like, laying over. He's like, oh, I need a Band-Aid or whatever. Gannon would literally walk around with toilet paper in the middle of his toes, and it would have, blood or whatever and just run everywhere to his room or whatever. Yeah. So what did you do on this occasion? We we literally took the paper towel, that's why I just told you about the toes, uh -huh. and put it in between. So it was in between his toes is where the injury No, was? he it was like wrapped here. Okay. Like we had it wrapped. And I don't remember if we got a band aid, to be honest. This is what in and it, Well that doesn't sound like a big injury. Though. Well it wasn't I mean he it was blood. There was a big injury. Um I left it on the wood because I said I'm not going to clean his fine African wood. What did it look like on the wood? Drops? Streaks? Well, what I did originally was I was trying to take water to do it, but then I realized if I put cleaner, then that wouldn't do anything but cause the wood to damage because Albert always wanted to build things with all this mm -hmm. wood that we bought. Oh, sorry. And if I use those pieces of wood and all that stuff, you know. Did you ever use that shop back to clean up anything out there? No. I never used the shop vac. The shop vac was never, I couldn't even, like, move anything with the shop. Anything that would have been moved, used with the shop vac would have been Albert, other than the times that we brought it, which would have been weeks ago, and we did spring cleaning or fall cleaning around the house, in the corners. And so that would have been the shop vac. I never, there was nothing I ever did and vacuumed up something with the shop vac. Right, or, like, that's helpful. I'm you just know, asking. Like any of that. Right. There, there, None of that ever happened. So, the burns on the arms weren't that bad. The, the cut on the toe or the bottom of the foot wasn't that so bad. So, we still were able to go hiking. He was he was able to still go right. hiking. It was bleeding on the board. But, but we not after to... that, not over the house, that sort of thing. Well, he had the piece of paper and went down to his room. Yeah. Like, wrapped around his foot. So, I mean, if anything, there was there could have been drops of blood or something. No. What about the wound to the head that you talked to Al about? So Albert was like trying to get me to say whatever, because I'm sure you guys are having to do that. And that's what he was doing. So Albert was trying to get me to say that, like talk about, talk to him about, you know, what he wants or, or, you know, whatever. So I threw off some stories to Albert because he was making me so upset, just like everyone not understanding that there's an intervention for it. And there's uh, there's a, there's someone intervening in this, and that's where people didn't understand and want to say anything. So I just started rambling stuff to Albert, and I even said to you guys, "Hey, I know you're listening," you know. And it was just to, to but, do whatever. But do you know what that sounds like, though, to a dad who's lifting a kid, and then you say, "And a grievous head wound happened, where it was blood running down his face, and that sort of thing," and it's. It, you know, had to bandage it up. and. Well, I don't remember saying anything about bandaging up. I think you said Quincy Brown tried to bandage it up. Oh, because he was making me mad about something. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't remember me saying I did that. So, he did suffer a head wound, though. We a know. head? Yes. Okay. Head or neck. Okay. And that is what caused the blood there. And so, if even if you choose not to tell us where Gannon is today because you're too nervous or whatever else, we would like to know where that was on him. So if we find him on our own, if you've given me the clues to go find him, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Where was that wound? Gannon is alive. He's alive, fine. <laughs> but where was that wound? Was it his neck or his head? I, I don't know anything about a neck or head. Well, you had to clean up the wall. You went ahead. That was not. That, that is not even from what what you're talking about. There had nothing to do with anything from Saturday, Sunday. And whatever that had nothing to do with any of it. How could it not? Though? It did there not. There was a lot of blood. It did and not. You're going to have to explain that, sir. It did not. Well, just tell me how. It did not. 
I promise you. But you're not going to tell me how. So where we can help you with You're not going to help me, though. How could I not help you? How are you going to get up, Leticia, on the stand after telling all these stories, which we're going to ask you about, and then say, I can explain all that, and it's some party that I never told law enforcement to go chase. If Gannon is alive, we have an 11-year-old kid somewhere being held against his will, and you're not telling us. You might as well have done this yourself. That's why I'm saying. Let me hold you again. I ran there. So I've paused it at um, two hours, eight minutes, and 55 seconds. What did she write down in your notebook? I just remember the first part, that the head wound was on Saturday. You remember it saying, uh, and had nothing to do with this? Words to that effect, yes. What was your take on that, that instead of saying it on the camera, she wanted to write it down um, in your notebook? Well, whether it's by now, whether it's the, the argument that she didn't want to talk about, the, the burns, and even calling Gannon, Gannon in as absent, you know, I, I wasn't pushing her. I would give her the, the opportunity to talk, and then she would not talk, so I would move on. And now that we're to the blood... And what happened in the room, I think it was too difficult for her to say it out loud with the head wound. When um, she's going over uh, the wound to the head and, and then she actually says um, she just started throwing out stories because Al was making me mad. You remember yep. that so portion? Um, what were your thoughts on, on that particular part of the interview? Well, that was consistent with what she was telling Al on the phone calls. And and Al would continue to push her like, we need to find Gannon. And then she would say, what about our relationship? So she would move from finding out what happened to Gannon to her feelings. And that's what she was doing here again. Is this also an example of her blaming others for her behavior? Yes. Uh, did you ask her about uh, blood being found in the back of her Volkswagen Tiguan? Yes, I did. Okay, we're going to play that por portion next. And just, just as I'm watching the time, is there a time that you want me to shoot for for a break? You can. Okay. Like I'll just watch the clock on that. All right. This next section um, picks up from here and goes through two hours, 10 minutes, and 57 seconds. About the blood in the back of the Tiguan. Tiguan? Mm -hmm. The only blood would have been in the back of the Tiguan when we were sitting. We we opened the car up in the car we were sitting there to do his blood. That has nothing to do with this. There's too much to be. No, uh-uh, no. That, that, no, 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 sir. That is absolutely not true. That was where we were sitting on the back of the car when we were unloading the stuff. We were sitting in the back of the car. There is no, uh-uh, no, sir. Mm -mm. There's plenty in the garage, though. So. But there was nothing in the garage. There was plenty of times that everybody worked in the garage. It had nothing to do with. Not everybody. Gannon's not working in the garage and bleeding all over the place. There was, sir. There was nothing about bleeding all over the place in the garage that had to do with anything. I'm telling you, what you're asking me is completely, totally different than anything has to do. Do you know what this looks like? Say you're telling me the truth again. Please don't think. Please don't care what I think. Say you're telling me the truth right now, that Saturday had nothing to do with him disappearing and being gone for over a month. Do you know what that looks like for you? It looks like I am in the next situation that I need help getting out. 
But but you're not willing to tell me how to help you. So now you're saying that Gannon had a really bad head wound on Saturday. No, no, I didn't say that. That's not what I said. The, the head thing was Saturday right. and was the saying, amount of blood no, there? No, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying what you're talking about is completely different than, than, than what you're saying. Correct. Again. Yeah. yeah, but this doesn't look any better for you because now you haven't told Al that he has a head wound. You haven't called the hospital. It wasn't like that. It was well, not like Then you have like. to tell me. I mean, you don't have to do anything, but. It's not what it was like, sir. It's not. Had nothing to do with me. It's not what it was like. Okay. So in that particular portion um, where you're asking about the blood on the Tiguan, um, were you, had you been made aware of uh, when she showed up to the El Paso County Sheriff's Office for an interview and the condition of her car? Yes. What information did you know about that? That the car had been washed. Did you uh, ask her if someone else injured Gannon in yes. this interview? Okay. We're going to jump to that portion. It picks up here and goes through two hours and 20 minutes and 06 seconds. Someone else injured him on Saturday. That's an easy question. You're not even having to tell me a name. Did someone else injure him on Saturday? I wanted to meet friends because I didn't have friends. That's where this is going to be, whatever, because you're going to take, you're not, you're not going to take my, my version and my side of right, well, what but, really happened. Leticia, let me stop you. If you help us, I will take whatever version you tell me, and I will actually prove it. That's all I do is I don't chase. I am wrong most of the time. Do you, you have a way to pull up apps? Do you have a way to pull up the stuff on apps? Do you have that? We can do that while you're here, yes. Okay. Well, I'm, no, Tell I'm me. saying you said you have this. Yes, oh, we have okay. ways to pull up apps. Okay. What app? How do you have ways to pull up apps? We have technical people. I'm not a tech person, but we have plenty of tech people that are super smart to do it. If you tell me what to do, we can do that while we're talking, take a break, you can go to the restroom, whatever else. We can solve this thing right now. Why come I just can't talk to you without a bunch of people watching me? Then we can talk right now. Yeah, but come on, there's people here. Yeah, what, what you, do you want I me to do? You tell me what you want to do, and I will have I you want do. to talk to you to tell you about leading up to anything I want to talk to you because I want you to find Gannon, and I believe in all my heart you will help me. Not lie to me. I will help you. Not try to say, oh, you're telling the story and throw me somewhere. Okay. So is he alive? I under Let me finish this, and I'll answer your question. I understand what you're saying about federal versus law and local, whatever. Okay. So the first set, the first thing I'm going to want to talk to you is that I don't want. Anything said before held against me, if I provide you with 100% the truth to help you. That'll work. This is the first time we're talking, and it's for a reason. You haven't okay. talked to the feds yet. Right. So if I can, I don't want to be sitting here with all these people watching because I want you to listen at exactly what happened and go from there. Okay? Okay. And that's not... I know you're trained to do this and interrogate people and all this. I want nothing more, nothing more than for Gannon to be okay. That's all I want. I promise you. That's all I want. Mm -hmm. And I will take whatever resources, whatever help you want me to go do, if it, even if it means take myself in the middle of somewhere where someone wants me to go to get him. Make sure he's okay. I would do it. Because right. I love Gannon. And I love my family. And I love the ground that everybody walks on. Albert, Harley, Lena, Gannon. That is my family. Okay. So in the end, you might think you got whatever by this and forensics and whatever. And I'm not arguing any of that. Very smart to know that you're a smart man. You're not stupid. 
but I need the help, the resources to not be attacked anymore. To know that some damn stupid app was just doing this. Okay. So you brought someone in. So I, I'm not. I, 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 know, but, but, I know. I get it. So I'm representing law enforcement in Colorado. Okay. And if you tell me something, even though, you know, we started a recording now, and if you say we won't talk unless we turn off the recording, that can happen, but I'm going to pull in all those resources. No, I want you to pull in resources. I'm not denying you to say pull in the resources. I'm looking at you from mother to a father. I have been scared because I don't know what's going to happen, not with because I did something. I wouldn't have told you that there was people, random people intervention or all these things if there wouldn't have been. Okay. I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. Could have easily just been like, hey, if if there was truly what you guys had thought about, I don't think you intentionally done it, there was an accident. Common sense, well enough to know to pick up the phone and say an accident happened. Not stupid. Okay. Might be freaking out because I don't know how to get this help, but I'm not stupid, okay? And that's looking you dead in the eye to tell you I did not hurt Gannon at all, okay? Where are you? So if you're willing to give me the opportunity to talk to you, I don't want to be, like, watched by people. I don't want to be, oh, whatever. This is a separate recorder. This is mine. Right. And so does the Myrtle Beach Yeah, they do. Right. But I need the help. You'll get the help. Okay. All we're focusing on is what we want. Okay. And that's what I want. I don't want to look at, like, you look at me like I'm just this bad person who doesn't want to find our child. That's not it. it. I just don't, when it, when it came at me as an attack, okay, because that's what originally happened, okay, and I get it. They have to do their job. Guess, guess what? They're probably parents too, right? So they have to do their job, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I get that part. Okay. You can ask me about any of these, whatever, whatever. I'm sure it was something I saw somewhere, and I don't never looked up anything about some stepchild. I've looked up how I haven't got help and how I wanted help and how I wanted to be the person that they always were. Why well, I didn't even want them to go home. I didn't even want them to have to go to their mother at all, at all, because I had to see the pain and agony out of worry. So you're going to take my character based upon no, no. whatever. That's just part. Listen, when, when a kid goes missing, we don't only look at right. the person. We look at the entire neighborhood. Right. We go through people's closets. Right. We go, everybody's lives is right. turned upside down. And I'll tell you right now, since if any of this is since then, of course, I've looked at what people said. If people said something about the FBI, I Google the FBI. Again, <laughs> you worry too much about what we think. If you will get us there, we can protect you. Okay. So then I talk to you. And I don't talk to Myrtle Beach Police Department and all these other people. I talk to you and I explain to you. Okay. Because the, you already saying you are charging me with something. It's already been charged. Okay, that's what I'm saying. You're already saying that. Okay. So... How do I know that when I get you, when I give you this here information? But that's that's what this recording does. It protects you because I've already told you we will do this. Well, we used to not record things, but we do now. And the, the only people sitting in there is the district attorney and some of the El Paso people. Myrtle Beach has nothing to do with this. They helped us find you. Right. So they have to be involved in this. I understand. Well. There's nothing against Myrtle so Beach. Myr Myrtle Beach is not in on this. Okay, well, if someone else took Gannon, we can find him. Here, I don't like that. I want to be able to have an emotional, raw conversation. Let's do it now. I can't. I mean, we can't go anywhere. Where do you want to go? Because I, I know people are sitting Nobody's here. Nobody's sitting there. Okay, someone's watching from there. They are in the other room. It's okay. the district attorney. Do you want me to tell them they can't watch? No, I want to talk to someone in a raw, real conversation so you can see truly in my heart, the situation. That's what I want. That's what this is. No, 
It's not her. But how can I make Who is it? That the district system? attorney from Colorado? Yes. Yeah, see? Come on. I can ask them to leave the room. No, it's not about leaving the room. It's about I'm asking for, instead of going through all, you know, this, whatever, sitting here wasting our time or whatever, I'm asking. Because I'm taking your word that you're going to help me and you're going to provide the resources from wherever you said you have them. Before I do that. So, at, in this portion of the uh, interview, it starts out with you asking her about, did somebody else in, injure Gannon? And then she went on the discussion about apps. Do you remember that portion? Yes. And you asked her to give the name of the app. And then it led to that long tangent. Was that another distraction attempt away from potentially things that may help? Misdirection, yes. Did you ask her about trips uh, that she may have made to Palmer Lake area, so northern El Paso County? I did. So we're going to watch that next, and this is short. It's from 2 hours, 20 minutes, and 10 seconds through 2 hours, 21 minutes, and 20 seconds. Let me ask you some questions, okay, because this is our investigation. Right. You're taking all these trips up to Palmer Lake, multiple trips, mm -hmm. different cars, mm -hmm. renting a car. Okay. How are you not involved in this? First off, I didn't ever get the drive to rental car anywhere because immediately once we, let me, let me go ahead and correct on this now. Once we got the rental car or whatever, the National Guard was there. Everybody was in the house. We went in Albert's truck the whole entire day going to come and go and all these places. So I never drove the rental car anywhere. And it's already been corrected from budget about the rental car situation. I had to get that corrected yesterday. I never even drove it anywhere because I didn't get to. So what, whatever GPS you get from the rental car, it never was driven by me anywhere, but literally up the street back. I didn't hardly drive it anywhere. So there was no rental car driven to any kind of places at all. The only time I went anywhere in the rental car might have been maybe 40, 50 miles. I don't know, no more than 100 miles, counting there and back. And that was just driving it through the day because I didn't have, I went back to get my car. But what information did you have about rental cars when you were asking that question? Uh, we had that on the day Al returned back in town, which I believe was Tuesday, uh, the Tiguan had been parked at the airport and Leticia had rented a car for that day leading into the next day. But then she'd actually came, came back and picked up the Tiguan Tuesday night. Um, I don't remember or not if I had the mileage. Uh, she is correct here, and she drove it between 50 and 100 miles. I think it was about 70 miles. It came back that the rental car was driven. And uh, like she said uh, correctly, you, you could see the level of detail here. I believe she's being honest. And it probably was not driven up to Palmer Lake. Uh, so, yeah, it was uh, factually correct what she was saying. Were you aware of her having access to any other rental cars during the early days of this investigation? Yes. Like the Nissan Altima? Yes, I believe her Tiguan was seized, and then after that, she rented the Nissan. A, a relative rented the Nissan? We've right. got that in evidence. That's okay. came from a different witness. But also, uh, did you later learn that she also had access to um, two different types of rental vans? Yes, I learned that later. Okay. Yeah. Did you have a discussion about uh, PetSmart slash Petco that leads into a discussion about um, blood on the walls and on her shoes and that kind of thing? Yes. All right, we're going to jump to two hours, 24 minutes and 51 seconds and play through two hours and 28 uh, minutes and five seconds. Because everything that I've looked at in this case, when you see the blood spatter on the wall, you see a big pool in the corner. Okay. You see your shoes that we collected mm -hmm. with Gannon's blood on okay. the bottom of them. Okay. And then you point to Eduardo, who doesn't exist, yeah. or maybe he did exist, and we don't have a last name. Okay. Then you point to Quincy Brown, 
and then you say Uncle Matt, these, these names and stuff, and it's like, I've seen it before, mm-hmm. and that, that was Harold. Mm-hmm. That was but the, I'm not Harold. I'm not saying you are, but I'm saying I'm, this is my experience. Right. I got you. I'm not saying you are, but it didn't go well for him because right. his attorney got up. He's one of the best attorneys in Colorado. Right. He cost six hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Greg Truman, and he started he paid six hundred thousand dollars. Okay, with his dead wife's money, and uh, Craig got up and said, "Harold is not a murderer, but he is a liar." Right, and that's what I was worried about when I first got the case because mm-hmm. they asked me to come in and work that case because I had worked other cases like it. And Harold's just sitting there all confident and whatever else. Please don't say this is you. I'm just saying this is my experience because Harold told all these different stories. But when you start out with your defense attorney saying, my client is a liar, he's just making up crap. Mm -hmm. That's to the victim's family on how Tony died. That's to his friends at church. And all of them got up and testified. These are the different ways Tony died. Again, it's not yet. But he might be today. (laughs) You don't know that if someone is willing, if this... Whether it's related or not, the head thing, if someone's willing to hold a kid for 30 days, how are they not willing to kill him? Can I ask you something, or can I say something? Yes. Even if the scenario would have been me just going to go talk to the the lady here and telling them, hey, this is what happened. This is who did it. I know that he was hurt by someone. You know what the next question you're going to say to me? Who was this person? And all I'd say to you was, oh, well, can you help me figure it out from this app? Or can you help me figure it out from this? And you know what you would say to me? Oh, yeah, sure. Right? That's exactly what you would say to me. So finding, the unless I can take you directly to where Gannon is, safe and sound, that is the only way that you're going to be like, oh, so this person is telling you that he's safe. So that's the only thing. I've even asked y'all, or I say y'all again, I mean you're. Asked, I get it. Hey, hey, please help. Mars and never would. Please, please, please. You're not understanding. Like I begged that. I have begged that completely. Like day in and day out. Begged it. Begged it to let I don't, me. I still don't understand. So, in this discussion where you're trying to find information about how could there be blood in these places and on walls and Eduardo and Quincy and all that kind of thing, um, is this consistent approach from her in that she then doesn't want to give you any answers? Yes. When you, when, either in the in the recorded consensual phone calls with Mr. Stauk or this interview, um, did she ever give you any explanation like, you know what, I just woke up and Gannon was hurt and I don't know what happened? No. Did she ever um, say that she blacked out and Gannon was just gone and didn't know what happened? She said once, what, that her head was hit and she was unconscious during part of this period, but not that she didn't know what happened. Okay. Um, Did she ever say she woke up in some other place and didn't know what happened? No. Um, Some point, there's been a couple of references now where she's wanting to go off camera, and and she does it here again as well. Some point, does one of the uh, uh, DAs that was with you out in South Carolina actually come into the room and have a discussion with her about going off camera? Yes. Uh, Was that Martha McKinney? Yes, it was. Who was the other DA that was with you out in South Carolina? Do you remember? I don't. Was it the young lady sitting here with us, Angelina yep. Graziano? Hi. <laughs> she look familiar? Yes, she does. <laughs> I'm going to jump to that section. So jumping to two hours, 34 minutes, and 20 seconds through two hours, 44 minutes, and 54 seconds. And before I jump, as I'm typing in the that timestamp to get to that exact point, is it shortly after this uh, where um, you actually leave the room for a little while and have a discussion about can we do this off camera thing? Yes. And th- when you did that, was that leaving her in the room, the defendant in that same room by herself for some period of time? Correct. 
Uh, did she do anything unusual during inside the room during that time? I recall. Starts talking in Spanish or anything like that? No. Okay. So we're at 234.20, and I'm going to play through 244.54. That's about like 20 minutes. Yeah, it is, Judge. Right. So Drew, can you can step down? Again. Thank you. I think uh, going forward, how many more of these do you have to play? Well, the whole thing, like I've told you before, Judge, is... Um, well, let me rephrase my... Let me give you some guidance. I think if he's... If it's going to be longer than about 10 minutes, Mr. Grusin can step down. Oh, minutes. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, I can just make notes of when they're going to be longer like that. And then this should get us to about 310, Judge. So okay. uh, maybe we can take the break right after this one. I'm not going to the district attorney's office. Just so you know, I looked behind there. This, this place is under construction. There's no one back. I can walk okay. you back there if you want to look. Oh, no, I believe you. I just talked about all these people watching. Yeah. So. And Martha's been watching. Yeah, I have. Yeah. John said you wanted to talk to me about protection. So I, I don't have any trust in anyone. Obviously, I know I've told him that I said things to Albert because I was not going to say whatever. But how do I know that I'm going to get help? Like, because I didn't hurt him at all. But I need the help to figure out how we're going to get to him. Let me read you what she wrote. Okay. Or I'll, I'll just show it to you. I, and I know it's Saturday. I probably should. Yeah. I had saying it was Saturday. It had nothing to do with it. I think it's all informal. This was fun. So we do have your phone, and okay. we have gone through like these are keystrokes. Right, right. I'm talking so, about like it's a like when you download it and that. Did you have a different phone beside the one that was in your van? Hmm? Did you have another phone, like a second phone? Yeah. And no, 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 no. It's the same phone. It's the, the same. same yeah, phone? yeah, yeah. No, not the same phone. You guys have the the phone that was the keystroke phone. Okay. Yeah. But at this at this time. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying that's the same, the 843, the 655 okay. number. But you didn't have a second one that this app might be on? No, 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 no. I only had this one. So, and let me explain, Martha, my understanding of what Latice is asking is, how does she know, since I've said, if there's a bad guy or guys out there that did this to Gannon, that she can tell us where these guys are. And she's concerned for not only her safety, but the safety of her family. Right. And how can See, she... See, I say when I trade my life for Gannon, and I said yes, but I said it's also other people. Like, how do I know that everyone else is not, is not going to be in this place? And how do I know that you guys aren't just trying to be like, whatever, if I walk you through anything or can help you with anything, I don't want to be just thrown somewhere like being like okay well you didn't tell me this and i want to be able to help you and work together because i'm sure you have kids or grandkids or whatever i do i don't want to sound like i'm cold-hearted and i'm just tired of being like the person chased instead of being able to have someone to actually have compassion to help me well i i was a little bit confused when i was watching it because john talked about how they're the fbi and they're the premier law enforcement agency that could protect you, could protect your entire family. Um, and they, if Gannon's alive, they not. Okay. I can't make you any promises. Right. Um, because obviously there's a lot of information that you have that we don't. Okay. So there aren't any promises. I can't come in here and, and promise you anything regarding the court case or um the, the arrest warrant or your involvement in it. Okay. But I can tell you what the number one priority is. Right. And it's to find Gannon. Right. And so if you were talking to some small law enforcement agency and they said, sure, we'll protect you, I mean, I can see how you would be right. suspicious of that. Why well, didn't you guys were the lead agency? That's why I was that's asking. It. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're the most elite agency there is. Oh, so, okay. And so if there was a time for for you to feel like that you could protect um, the that reporter, we can. So I know you have yours. That's yeah, what I'm saying. There's a backup. So um, if you want the recording turned off, you need to tell us really explicitly that that's your choice. Because the recording 
um, have been put into law so that there's not a debate where he says you said one thing and you said I didn't, right? So it's to protect the person being interviewed. Right. But if it's something that you... It's um, not that I'm, I'm trying to, I just don't, it's just I wanted to have like a conversation with right. him, just him, and try to explain to him in complete detail about everything because I do want this, I want the help to the next level to find out where he is. I really do. You guys have looked, you went to GPSs and all this, but you haven't found Ian because you're coming after me. And I understand you're going to say, well, this is what we have to go on, and I respect that totally. But it was the first time I ever get to sit down with people to actually to say, okay, this is what happened. This is what I know. Please help me. Because then I feel like if I don't, you see, I easily would be like, hey, just give me an attorney and call it a day. But I really want, so do you think I want to waste time if I got resources when that's all I've asked for? I don't want to waste time. And, and if there's a chance, it can be told. Everybody wants that information. But the only people who can say them are the FBI. Um, I don't want you to think that this is being broadcast to the whole world. Right. You know, there's another DA with me. There's no Catholic County person. Right. Um, and they're the ones. What, what The reason that we do that also is I might miss something, and I probably do. And so then I can go talk to them and say, what am I missing? And, right. And then also it protects you because yeah. if I make a promise that I can't deliver on with the FBI, then Martha gets to right. hear it, and then she would knock on the door. But as soon as I give you the information, what's going to happen is someone's going to say, well, you were involved with this person. You were cheating with this person. You were doing this. I'm just giving you scenarios. But that's, that's a, a lot better situation than you're but, in right but now. But what if I wasn't? That's my thing, and that that's where the burden of proof I can't. I can't depend my life on the burden of proof to be involved with just someone thinking that I'm just a bad person. I did not hurt Gannon. Okay. There aren't any promises I can make you without you. Um, I, I can tell you that we're looking for the truth. And it seemed to me from listening to it that you had information um, but I can't make you any promises. But what I'm saying is, if you're saying to me, I have information, you're going to come and say, well, you should have given this information when I did nothing but attack. But, That's what I'm saying. You, oh, you, you see what I'm saying? You can't armchair quarterback yourself, though. Do you know what I'm saying? You you can't look into the future and say, well, we're going to say this because you said this. If what Martha and I are saying are true and that our only focus is Gannon, we don't care who leads us there. We just need Gannon. Then you are protecting yourself by telling us this. If you never give us this information, then you don't protect yourself. And then we have one person to prosecute for Gannon. Well, and our focus is who took him and who hurt him, not with when people came forward with information. How do I know that? Because that, that's my that's my biggest thing. I know you're saying that. But, like, whatever I can do to help, I can help you. But I'm saying, how do I know that if, let's just say, if the, whatever, I tell you a specific person, okay, let's mm -hmm. just say that, okay, then my my thing is, what well, you, your thing is going to be like, well, you held this information for me, and I'm having to utilize my resources, okay, and do all those things, not understanding that, Maybe sometimes there are people who are afraid of any other things going on. Uh, every day in my work, there are people who report things later than some people think they should. Every day. Um, and we try to focus on the violent crime. And we certainly try to focus on the kids. Um, I know that you want assurances and you want me to be able to say, you know, I will or won't do this, um, and I can't make you promises because I'm in the dark, right? It would be foolish for me to make you promises, but I have people who late report sex assault all the time. We have people who come forward years later. Our interest is in the truth about the crime. This is really all conversation to have. Um, and I know that you wanted to have a frank conversation with him where you could really tell him. But unless you need me, I'm going to step out. 
but you're still going back in the room. Would you like to turn it off? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we'll turn it off. Um, not, how do I know that? It's not that I want you to know no. anything. I want to be able to like really talk to him. Know that I can sincere see in your heart you're going to help me. I can bring you back there and sh you can see us turn it off. But the truth is, I could just turn it back on again. I know. I mean, there's a point where no one can verify everything you want. Well, well plus, that's her life. She has to tell the truth, just like I do you, when you don't want her to listen to you. You kind of have to look at logic here. Okay. I don't think Martha would throw away. Not, I don't, and I don't want no. you to know. I want <laughs> you to have all the information. Yeah. That's well, it. So just, what, are you okay with the recording continuing? We just won't be monitoring. No, I don't, he said that we You wanted to turn off? He said I could just talk to him. Okay. Um, so we're just going to turn off the recording, and that's your choice. That's okay. what you want, right? Okay. Yes. Um, and so he controls the turning it off from here, or are they? No, you'll have to ask. Okay, I'll have to. Do. Someone to and so it's it's just going to get turned off. Okay. And then once it's done, then I'll come back out and we'll turn it back on. And it'll it'll be a conversation between the two of you, and it'll be like the way um, law enforcement. All can right. You, anything else for me? No. I'm gonna go get him. Turn it off. No, so that's that portion, Judge. Do you want to take the break now or go a little bit more? Let's go a little bit longer. Okay. Mr. Bruce. Okay. Yeah, let's go a little bit longer. Some point did you have a discussion with the defendant during this interview where you're talking about ransom? Yes. Why was that part of the discussion? She had brought that up. I think it was on February 15th that Quincy Brown had, was demanding a ransom. And also, since we were talking about a group possibly having Gannon, there was, I couldn't see another reason why someone would have him. He would still be alive without them asking for something in demand. But, but why bring it up in that, in that particular interview? Are, are, why confront her with that? Just to change tactics a little bit and see if she will move somewhere else, really. Okay. Um, in that portion of the discussion, were you um, also talking to her about uh, in ransom cases, kids don't actually turn out to be okay? Yeah, and I hadn't, maybe I'd worked one ransom case, if that. Uh, we just, we don't see that very often. Normally, our rule is that the 24-hour the rule, the 48-hour rule, the further the further away you get, from an abduction, uh, the less likely the child is going to survive. And so now we were at over a month. Does that same hold true um, for a missing kid? So the longer you get away from the point that a kid goes missing, uh, the chances of survival go down as well? Correct. Did the defendant bring up a who she describes as an FBI agent named Barbara? Yes. Um, what was your take on that portion of the discussion? I did not know a Barbara who was involved, and I asked the Colorado Springs office if there was a Barbara working in the case, and they said no as well. Okay. The next section, Judge, that I want to get into is about a 10-minute video. Do you want me to go into that, play it, and then? Let's do that. Okay. Uh, so, preceding that, uh, she's already sort of challenged you on uh, because you asked the question a particular way, um, that shows that she couldn't trust you as it relates to Quincy being in Mexico. Do you remember that part? Yes. Uh, does she bring that up again about that's why I have a problem with trust? Yes. All right. And so I'm going to jump to two hours and 49 minutes and one second. So this is a 10 minute section, Judge. And then if we're going to go directly to break, maybe he can come down. That's fine. You can step down. Thank you, sir. Um, and then it happened February 5th, I think. So what happened was I got all the messages when I logged back in for my iCloud. I got all the messages that were just sitting there. And so I took that message and I forwarded it to a city people and I sent it to Albert and I said, hey, I said, can you get someone to like look into this? I said, it could be just people 
you know, sending random messages, or it could be creeper, you know, like people, whatever, being stupid, or it could be just in general, you know, um, the actual person. And so no one ever said anything to me about it. Then I get the Snapchat. Okay, so that's your. Leticia, there's an 11 year old kid. Again, we have to go back there. 11 year old kid, injuries in the house. Now we know that. Taken. And you don't come to law enforcement for 30 this was This was a law enforcement but, person. No, there's I no did. Barbara. I mean, how did you get in from, except through your friend? You had she Amber said, from the FBI. Right, but she said that she worked with the FBI and she was going to send information. She said that she worked with Amber. I swear to you, if you call Amy, you can get the number from her to find out what, what Barbara, who, who the Barbara lady is. And she was actually emailing her today. But, um, but if you told them back then and you trusted them with that information. This is why. Why, I, you why know, are you not today? When, it's when because I'm, no one has helped. I tried since February 5th. The 5th. Today's March. That's why you see I have such a problem with trust. Because I, been, that was there when you were talking to Amber, though. That was your chance. And to Amber. Yeah, that's the right. legit FBI. So then, is that what happened when I was talking to Amber? I got a message back from the attorney who said not to talk to you guys because you guys a weren't the lead agency or something like that, and then b not to say anything else unless he was present. That was when I was trying to talk to Amber. But why wasn't that with Barbara then? Because I gave it to my friend Amy, who was, had this relationship with Barbara, like trying to check on her. See, uh, and I've, again, this sounds like a lot of your calls mm -hmm. to where you're, you're pointing fingers in different directions, but never giving specific things. Right. I did. Right now, I mean, if Gannon is somewhere and you can get us there, and they he sent proof of life or a picture of Gannon or whatever else, it makes no sense for someone, for some man. To have an 11 year old child. That, it wasn't that. It was because we thought it was someone playing games. And if someone was playing games, we were trying to say that that person would have been like, like obstructing or whatever. That was the whole point. Not some somebody had him and they were like, here, come get. My point was it was that we thought it was someone, hey, here's someone playing games. Could you find out who this person is? Yeah, but do you see where that's going? And all your talks with Al. Those are distractions. Those take up time. Yeah. And Gannon's over here somewhere. Yeah. And you are misleading law enforcement. No, I didn't mislead them. No. Well, you're misleading anybody who would report to us. No, I didn't mislead any of them. Who, who did I mislead? With all these other stories. That was to Albert. It wasn't misleading law enforcement. But you knew we were in the room. You yeah, because that. I, and I, that's, I wouldn't have said stuff like that if I was trying to mislead. I was just being whatever to Albert because he was making me upset. That's all. The dad of a kid who's Kent is not finding his son. Because, because I'm also the stepmother who helped him get the kids, and he wouldn't have gotten them without me. So, yes, he so wouldn't have. You're willing to do that to Al, though. No, I already had apologized to him and said that was awful to say that to him because I was angry. I had already done that. But before we kick this thing in motion about all this protection and whatever, Why haven't you said one thing, though, today? How, how in the world would he suffer a head wound on Saturday that required I didn't say it was a head wound that required a thing. I said the head thing you're talking about when I said something to Albert. I said the head thing you're talking about. That's what I said. So the bike accident thing? You already trying the bike accident. No, the head thing talking to Albert. Never mind. I'll just I'll just wait until you are ready to talk to me with from beginning uh, to the end. Because I already said that that is completely irrelevant to anything that what you're talking about. Completely irrelevant. I told Albert something else that was just story, just to be whatever to him. And it was wrong, and I already had apologized So to the Albert. things that you told Albert were that he was peeling these burns. Was that happening? I'm not going to answer any more questions because you're asking me about things telling Albert out of being upset. There was nothing happening that I was telling Albert. Nothing. I was literally just saying that to Albert because I was upset for him not standing by me and was figuring this out. This had nothing to do with me wanting to purposefully do whatever or tell you guys anything. That was not what it was. But 
It was me so being upset with let Albert. Me, let me go back to a kid missing is about as bad as it gets. Oh, yeah. I had a bank robbery 15 years ago where a female went in the bank. She robbed the bank. She got the money. She came back to the car, and she drove away. Mm hmm she was prosecuted for that. There were guys in the car with guns. Mm -hmm. Okay. But what did she could have gone into the bank, said, lock those doors. Those guys are making me do this. Right. You know, yours is now, we have 30 some days of being a missing, and you haven't talked to one law enforcement officer to say, I know where he is and he's safe. I never, I never did not try to talk to you guys. I never did not. No one ever. When I felt like I was beginning, like, completely, like, bam, 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 bombarded by El Paso, that no one ever reached out to me from FBI to, like, have a conversation like you did. No one. No one ever did. And you don't feel comfortable talking to El Paso, why? It's not that I don't feel comfortable talking to them. I just feel like from point A to point B, they have taken this approach and have deviated in a common way. Like, they can about this. Right. Because that's that's the approach that they've taken as if it's a person who is not alive. And that bothers me because I don't want well we anyone we're to actually take the ones approach. we're the ones that told them that. And that's statistically true. What? You statistically told what? From Gannon's age mm -hmm. and from the amount of time that he's been missing, he is most likely dead. But what I'm saying is as a parent is that Maybe because you're, like, used to saying that or something, but is that something, like, as a parent you would want to hear? No. But would you rather hear a lie? Would you rather hear statistically he's probably a lie? When it's about a, I would say it's less than a 1% chance at this point. But why? Him being 11, they would have asked for something. If but why? Kidnappings don't happen without a demand or mm -hmm. without it being a parental deal parental deal or a demand. Yeah. So you're saying that nothing else, nobody intervenes ever, ever. I've seen one other time, and again, I've worked violent crime in Denver for 20 years, mm -hmm. a little over, and I saw one kid wander down the street. He had autism, mm -hmm. and this was up in Brighton, and a guy took him in the house. He had him for a day. The guy was mentally disabled as well, so we had two things happening at once. We had a kid mm -hmm. with autism who just started wandering. And then we had a developmentally delayed adult who was just playing video games with him for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. But we ended up, the public said, there. Mm -hmm. And I remember knocking on the door. He had made little blankets for the kid in there. The kid was playing video games and nothing bad had happened. Right. That's the exception. I've been to where kids have been dismembered, 10-year-olds. That's awful. And from the blood in the house, that's what I'm thinking that's happened. Awful. I'm not saying he just got dismembered in the house. But mm -hmm. there's enough blood in there mm -mm. that we don't think he survived. Mm -mm. How could you have, like, possibly say that when you clearly began in walking, leaving on Monday? Yeah. I don't, see, that's... Well, that's leaving on Monday at 10, yes. Right. Correct. Right. Walking, okay? But he comes back. Walking. Correct. Okay. Walking. Not walking well. Totally fine. Stomach hurts. Walk with like this. Yeah. Yeah, but he's back at two. Back at two. Mm hmm Okay. Okay. If that's if that's what you say, then I'm just then this whole thing is like even pointless to even say anything because if you're saying back at two. But then you're also saying something about going legs and here and there and whatever. And it's like none of it is even making sense. It doesn't even make sense. So For between me, the two, two Petco trips is when he disappeared then. To, I, I, it doesn't make sense to me Leticia. to say. So let me tell you. I've been working for 14 years with mm -hmm. a guy named Scott Kimball. He's our informant that went around killing the girls. You remember me telling you about him before? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. When we first started. Not our best day because I have dads out there who still wonder if their daughters are alive. Mm -hmm. Scott taught me one thing very well. 
there's only two people that mm-hmm. can tell a story when someone either goes missing. Because one of one of these girls, Jennifer, is still missing. Like I said, we've, we're pretty sure she's dead because it's been 14 years since mm-hmm. anybody's seen her. But Scott told me, John, only two guys, only two people can testify to what me happened between me and Jennifer. And that's me, and that's Jennifer. Right. And you're never going to find her. He said that to you? He did. Wow. So I've got to answer to his dad for the rest of my life. And I'll probably be answering to his dad after I retire because dad has my cell phone. Dad calls me on her birthday, on the day she went missing, on Father's Day. How was he able to say that to you? Because he's like, there's no other witnesses. So when when I take a guess, and that's mm-hmm. a guess that he came back home, that's because people that looked on the video said he probably did or, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't have the information you have. And I hear you do that to Al Mm -hmm. by saying, oh, so that's what you think. Well, Mm -hmm. none of us know. You know. Because I have. That's three hours. Oh, wait a minute. Did I stop at a minute too early? I think I did. My eyes are getting bad. We got one more minute. (laughs) That way. If I don't be that way, then no one's going to help me. I don't. I didn't hurt Gannon. I didn't. That's fine. But right now you're the only one that was with me. But I didn't hurt Gannon. But. How are you going to get past these charges without help? How does that work? When without you, help? Without you telling me. Like, again, it'd be like someone, I told you the story about Jennifer. If somebody knew where Jennifer was, mm-hmm. and they're not telling me or Bob Markham, the I dad. I didn't say I knew where Gannon was. It's you not, said you know he's okay. No, I said as a parent, I'm never going to sit here and say, look at you and say, He's not okay. That's not what I'm going to do because I didn't do this. So why would I look at you and say that? Like I'm dead looking at you in the eye saying I would never as a parent say that. No way could I ever say that because I love Gannon. I did not hurt Gannon. I told you. All right. Now it's really three hours, one minute, and 35 seconds. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will take our afternoon break until 335. I can have... Okay, we're good. Um, we're going to take our afternoon break. Um, if I can uh, have everyone back in the jury room and say 335, we could be able to start right on time at that point. Again, don't discuss the case among yourselves. Don't discuss the case with anyone else. Um, all rise for the jury, please. <laughs> Thank you. You may all be seated. Record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. Um, with that, court will be in recess until 3.35.
while they're coming in. Fine. Shout out to the Irish group. Um, yep. Co-host rights. Oh, oh. So that's what was going on. Yeah. I told, them, I told her it was, I said, that's okay. Yeah. It's not a problem. Hey, Mr. Allen. Yes, if sir. If we could stop. Yeah. Ten till. Ten till. Ten sure. till five. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. If you want, if you wanted a little bit of cushion, I could stop it even quarter till if you want, just to give us that extra. No, it's just going to be a longer instruction for them because I, since it's the weekend, yeah. I read in the whole thing, and um, I want to go over exhibits. Okay. Yeah. That has been a constant problem, hasn't it? What's that? It's a good one. Yeah, it's okay. It's just that much that long. Right. No, but I mean, it just is. Is it just happened to be that? Yeah, just that when they're transporting. Oh, we don't want oh, 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 that's what that's right. Oh, it's because it, is, it, un it undid itself one time. Okay. Oh, I can't. I'll rise for the jury, please. So it's just an extra step. Yeah. Yeah. One section of the yeah. Yes. I did it with that. I did because transport is me. Yeah. And Owen's been so good at me. If I forget it, he takes it off. Thank you. You may all be seated. Recall 20 CR 1358 People versus Letitia Stauk. Record should reflect the re return to the courtroom. Mr. Allen? Thank you, Iron. We'll just need the screens turned back on again. Thank you, Judge. <clears throat> in that last section and also in the section um, where the other DA was in the room, um, appears that defendant used misdirection again. Um, Again, was that fairly common throughout this whole thing? Yes, and she was very effective at doing it when we brought uh, the district attorney in and she couldn't promise Letitia something. That was yet just another obstacle that we had to overcome to get to the questions we were asking. Um, similar to the idea that if uh, she would put conditions out there that may maybe even be difficult for you to meet? Yeah, the witness protection, the the DEA involving other federal agencies, you know, she, she had a very organized way of thinking about how I might not be able to do the things she's asking and thus she might not have to answer the questions. When, when the, when the misdirection would be employed by the defendant, was it around specific points of interest in the story of what happened to Gannon? Yes. Such as what? Well, right now we were trying to figure out who had him to get at the identity of that. And that was where we were focused. And then instead of giving a name, she would give conditions. But looking back at the phone calls, she would do the same thing with Al. Uh, it was a condition of their relationship status first before she would give the location of Gannon. Do you remember her making a statement right after what we just watched where she says, I'm not the one? Yes. Um, and you then go through a, a description of extradition to Colorado and being in jail. Yes. Okay. We're going to play that next. And that starts at three hours, one minute, 41 seconds through three hours, three minutes and 33 seconds. I'll just play it directly from here, actually, because it's only six seconds later. And most of these happen. They happen in the house with parents get, who love their kids. I get what you're saying. Okay. I understand. I appreciate what you're saying. I appreciate all the work and time and dedication you put into all of these things to have those decisions. But I am not the one. But then if you're not the, one, not the one, you're you're going. So do you know what happens from here? What? You go to a local holding cell. Okay. They hold you for 24, up to two weeks until you okay. get extradited back to Colorado. Okay. You're in jail, Leticia. And unless you tell me that somebody else did this, you're the only one that did it. No, I didn't do it. But I'm telling you. But I didn't. But that's what would be horrible, is if someone else did this, and you're going to let them skate because you're scared? Not letting someone skate. If what I, could you possibly be scared of at this point? 
I'm not letting, do you think I'm going to sit here and let someone skate if I could take you directly to the person right now? Why do you think I would need resources? You don't need resources. Right now what you need is that if someone took my son yeah. and I know who it is, Am I going to go to jail for the rest of my life because someone else took my son? No, absolutely not. No, and would I be afraid of my own protection going to jail when I could be free and that person could go to jail? That yeah, but doesn't she make just any sit sense. there. Even if I walked you to the person, she just sit there and said, oh, well, I can't make any promises. I can't make promises. <laughs> what is better, to go to jail for the rest of your life and, and hope that we find the person or to point us to a person? If I'm in your position, it makes no sense. Right. What could you be scared of at this point? Reprisals? No. Um, the fact that I mean, you don't have – apparently you would have found some of this already if you would have had the resources. That's what scares me. So stopping you at three hours, three minutes, and 33 seconds, um, after you explained the extradition, you said you're the only one that did this. Um, does she then use misdirection again to get you off topic and move you away from trying to press her? Yes. What about the, what's your impression of that very end where um, what scares me from her perspective is you would have found this if you had the resources. What's your take on that? It's uh, what I explained to her earlier that she's expecting me to know answers to the questions that only she has the answers to. Is she also in a sense um, challenging whether you even have the the ability as an FBI agency to provide her the things that she's putting down as conditions. Yes. Did you confront her by saying uh, right after this, her story makes no sense? I did. So I'm gonna jump, jump to that section. It's uh, three hours, three minutes and 49 seconds. And it goes through three hours, four minutes and 59 seconds. So your story makes no sense. And what it goes back to now okay. is that you can't take responsibility for what happened to I, Gannon. I didn't do anything to Gannon, sir. You can't insert someone else in here unless you're going to tell me who it is. Okay, I didn't do anything to Gannon, sir. That's fine. But then you would tell me who it is if you I give it someone else. I didn't do anything to Gannon, sir. Did he do it to himself? Okay. I didn't do anything to I'm Gannon, I'm not sir. asking you if you did. I'm asking you, did, did Gannon do it to himself? Do what to himself? the head injury, the neck injury, whatever that was that caused that pool of blood down by the bottom of his bed. You know that the sheets and all that stuff, the blood seeped down in. And what now? The blood seeped down that, through that corner. Sheets? Through the sheets into the mattress. I have no idea what you're even talking about. You cleaned it up off the wall. So wait, wait, wait. There's, you know, know where the head better. of his bed I was? I don't, I don't know anything about blood and sheets, okay? I did you, not take any sheets and clean them. You told Al on the phone you cleaned up the wall. <laughs> so now paused at three hours, four minutes, and 59 seconds. Um, you start to confront her about the head injury and the blood and all that sort of thing. Um, did she use misdirection there again, directing away from the head injury? Yes. What's What was significant about that to you? By this point, you know, none of my questioning was effective with her. So every time we would go to one of these and she would misdirect, um, the significance just was that I was going to have to change course yet again. Again, was this happening as you're trying to dive into what actually happened again, but then she diverts over to the sheets? Yes. Um uh, what, what's happening here where someone's come in and said something to you and then you're getting up to leave? So Letitia had requested to talk to me off camera and the uh, police department could not turn the camera off. So they had decided to get us a separate room and myself and Special Agent Cohen were going to speak with Letitia off camera in this other room. And so is there a period of time where the room is just empty while you're off with the defendant in some other room? Yes. Okay. So we're going to talk about that. And so the, um, let me, I'm going to play it until both of you are out of the room and then we'll pause it again. Okay.
Here's a t-shirt for your request. I'm just going to leave that recorder in there. We're going to a room that doesn't record. Are you sure you don't need to go to the restroom? Empty. Bring my computer over. Do you need anything to eat? Take your water with you just in case. Okay. Great. So uh, before we get into this off camera discussion that you had with the defendant, that little portion where she was inside the room by just herself, what, did you see anything in there that caused you concern as to her mental faculties? No. Did she appear to be acting normal to you? Yes. Okay. This off camera discussion, um, let's talk about first the, just the process that was undertaken here. Who was involved with it, first of all? Uh, well, Myrtle Beach arranged for us to have a, another room to talk with her in. I, I believe the chairs were already put out. It was a lot bigger room than this one, from what I recall. And uh, myself, I introduced, uh, or I guess Special Agent Cohen introduced himself, and we just sat in the middle of the room to see what she had to say. And when you say Special Agent Cohen, you're talking about the guy sitting here? That guy, yes. That guy? Should we call him that guy from now on? Uh, how long would you say that portion of, of your interaction with the defendant lasted? I recall about 30 or 40 minutes, maybe. Was she talking to you in that room much the same way we've been seeing in this recorded interview? Yes. Can you give the jury um, some ideas to what that means? It was more of needing protection that I recall. Uh, the, the primary things I remember from this was that this person or people that she was uh, saying was responsible for Gannon might have been associated with an app that was on her phone and that Al had wanted Leticia to participate in a threesome. And this person that was part of the threesome might be the person responsible for Gannon's disappearance. When you say um, these people, is she pointing her finger away from herself saying these people, or is she saying these people that are inside of herself? No, it's another person or, and why I say people is when she's talking to me, it sounded like a group. So I'm leaving that just kind of open, but she was referring to this threesome as like it was another female who was involved that if we find who's in, in this app, we might find the person who abducted Gannon. In the when you're saying app, you're talking about was she saying an app on a phone? That's correct. Okay. And when when we're talking about these other people, um, just to be very clear, she's not. Well, is she saying that these other personalities that are inside of her own self, no. other persons or personalities? No. Okay. Did she describe in that portion of your interview this off camera uh, a different way in which Gannon suffered a head injury? Yes. What was that? I believe it was the pushing the beds together. Okay. Uh, did she describe that it has occurring on Saturday night? So that would be January 25th. Yes. Do you remember um, her giving you any description as to her looking at and assessing that injury? Yes. Leticia said she looked at the injury, assessed it, and said it wasn't uh, very egregious. Did she include specifically that it didn't even need stitches? Yes. Did she give a description as to where on the head um, that injury occurred? I don't recall at this point. Okay. If you saw your report, would that refresh your memory? Yes. Okay. Hold on just a second. 
No, I'm not seeing it in this particular report. So let me come back to that in just a moment. Um, <clears throat> did she talk to you about taking a SIM card from her phone? Yes. What did she say about that? Yeah, I don't remember that either. Sorry. Okay. Well, that one is definitely in this report that I've got in my hand right now. Um, before I get to that, though, were you aware uh, from the investigation that her cell phone was seized by El Paso County Sheriff's Office uh, on January 29th when she tried to leave the Sheriff's Office during her interview? Yes. Um, do you know or are you aware of cell phones having SIM cards that are in them? Correct. Uh, and so her indication that she still had a SIM card from that phone, would that be uh, factually possible? It should not be. Okay. I'm going to show you again. This is 721. I'm sorry, 7219. SIM card sections here. Um, this is page pagination 11 7220, page 3 of 4. Look at that. Let me know when you're done. Okay. Did that refresh your memory? Yes. What did she say about the SIM card? She said that it was the SIM card she had previously, but she had placed it in her friend's phone. Okay. Did she describe getting a bunch of messages then at that time? Yes. Was this another distraction in your mind? Yes, it was nothing that we thought was possible. I, I don't even know if the investigation was able to verify it or not because that happened after my involvement. Okay. And then going back to um, that head injury issue that we were talking about earlier, uh, where I asked if it would refresh your memory to see the report. I just didn't pick up this one page. It's 11721. May I approach and uh, have him review that page? Okay. This is the last paragraph on this page. Okay. Did that refresh your memory? It did. Uh, where did she describe that head injury um, that was caused by pushing the beds together occurring on Gannon's head? She said it was a gash in his left temple. Did she also give a full assessment of other injuries during this portion? No. Okay. Was there some discussion here about um, Angel and Petco? Yes. What do you remember her saying about that? Well, we discussed Angel later uh, on back on camera uh, but uh, i remember angel coming up as a result of this app and the threesome that happened as angel was a female who may have been involved in gannon's disappearance and this angel is potentially the one that the defendant was suggesting might have been contacted for the threesome issue correct Shortly after that portion of the discussion, do you come back on camera with the defendant? Yes. All right. I'm going to retrieve that page of the report from you. And jump to uh, the next time that you're in the room, which is three hours, 13 minutes, and 25 seconds. Is this um, immediately uh, after you get out of that separate room that's not recorded, do you then discuss Angel on camera? Yes. Is that what we're about to watch here? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to play uh, three hours, 13 minutes, and 25 seconds through three hours, 25 minutes, and 41 seconds. Judge, this is about a 12-minute gap of time. So maybe you want Mr. Grusing to step down? Okay. You all right? For the with the district attorneys and stuff for this protection thing with uh, Angel, we have to know 
last name, all that stuff, how you met her. I mean, I know you say that at and whatever, but how else do we identify Angel? Can you describe her? Yeah. What does she look like? She actually got her. Yeah. But where all have you met her? When did she come to your house? Were you saying September? And then who did, who all did she babysit? Okay. Quite a few people that were like me. So these messages that are coming through to your phone, the you know, threats or whatever they are, are they coming from her? So you can get on the YouTube channel. What is your Snapchat name? I would need to have my phone. But do you remember? Did no. it have her name in it? Was no, it a no, number? That's why I asked for help, but he's not the one that wants it. To tell you back what we talked about, but I don't know. So, if I'm not going to get any help, then I'll just have to get help. And I trusted you to talk to you. Well, we, we went in there, I know, and, and I don't know, Leticia, if it's just the way you're used to communicating right. over a long period of time, but yeah. when, when you're asked a question, you don't really answer. You, you kind of go in a little circle. So right. if I, I said like, you know, like, well, I said like, where did you last see Gannon? And, and then you say, well, I was supposed to drop off, you know. Yeah. So we're just used to asking you a question mm -hmm. and then you tell us an answer. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know. Mm -hmm. I just don't, you know, I've always said that I don't know. So, are you, that's just how you've always done for like the last, what, five, ten years? I mean, most of the time, I guess I can New to my ears, I don't know. Like, you know. It's, it's going to look bad. No, I'm not. That's not what I'm talking about. Like, it's not even going to look like that. Here's what it's going to look like: is that you were the last one again, and nothing on this angel thing. We can, or we we can't authenticate any of that. When you say it's all off camera, like with the black and Paula in the parking lot, we have cameras for that whole place, and we don't see you meet okay. with anybody. Well, can can you like show me that so that I can show you where what direction? But you would know where it is. Where did I you? I said meet? what direction because I'm not really trying to call out. I was looking to show you. What did you talk about? What direction? Because where it would be at, then maybe you could pull like if you wanted to pull the camera off and another place. I mean, because there's lots of places you could pull the camera off. Well, that's all I'm asking for. I mean, yeah. that's, that's offering help. Yeah, it's it's help, oh, but Gannon goes into a, this car. I mean, this I is a person that you trust. I do. Right? That's the thing. Why am I saying you? So then why would yeah. you go home and say that he's here, that he's now gone away? I mean, You're leading. I never said he was here, not gone away. Well, that you were at, he was at the house. Yeah, but do you see where I'm going with that? Why Why would you make that up that story to law enforcement? That he was going to a friend's house. Because if her nephew was a friend. I mean, I don't understand how that's a problem. Angel's nephew was a friend. Oh, that's right, that they had played together. But she was, did she live in your area? Where did she live? I mean, 
time again. I'm like kind of tired. If stuff will come through, you know, with people sending stuff, saying stuff. But the people, are they different people from Angel? I mean, are they acting on her behalf? Because that doesn't sound like a friend to me. Right. Obviously, if, if they're not helping you, it's your child is not a friend. But how do you think that makes them? Trusting people? If he doesn't make them feel like they're irresponsible? Like trusting people? Yeah. Trusting someone? Do you know who tells the story from here on out? Your story? I asked for help. But do you know who tells the story? Yeah. How this works out it from here? Key to, it is open to you to be able to see she and I. There is an angel. Well, just like we found Quincy Brown right away, we can find angels. But if there's not an angel, that's the last story you're going to tell law enforcement about Gannon. Sure. Well, but I mean, we'll be able to get, we'll get your warrants for the three saying whatever else. We'll go interview this angel. And if it's like what I think Quincy Brown is, then angel's just going to be. I will help you. Okay. I tried to get your help. When I gave you the wrong information, you tried to get your help. But I think I can help you. How is that? I'll bring you some. But I'm happy to chase down anything you tell me to. Atisha, and I can. But I think that Al left you alone because he's gone to Alaska for so long. And then he's on this trip and you left raising Gannon. And something bad happens. I don't know if it's your fault or Gannon. It doesn't really matter. And you panic. And you ask, was I the person talking for Al? Yes, I was. But I think the closest you came was talking about his head injury. And then, because you asked Al, you asked Al. I would have, like. No. If someone took your son, you would have called. I did call. You did not call the police. Yes, I did. I called the police. The Petco, right when they, right when he was taken. No, that's not taken. He was supposed to be playing. I, as soon as he got the home, I did. But you did, you were supposed to meet her, what, the next morning? No, I called immediately when at 6 o'clock at the time he was supposed to be home, I called the police. I did. And then what did you tell him? You already know what I told them. Yeah, but that doesn't make it, that doesn't make any sense. Why does it? Yes. Because you, I told you, I have talked to a lot of people that are sitting in the same chair you are right now, and I've seen them. And, and I'm sorry if it offends you if I say story, but that's the only way you're coping with this right coping. now. Coping? Yes. Yeah. We all cope. Okay. Sir, we did everything. I'm not saying you did. I'm just saying that you're unwilling to come to the, the truth because it's going to be painful. I gave you the truth. I didn't hurt you. That's the truth. So the last truth you want to tell me, you're just to make sure. You're not going to say anything else, sir. Is the angel story. I'm not going to say anything else, sir, because you didn't help me. I will help you if you will tell me one concrete way to find Gannon. Okay. Leticia. You're not trying to help me. Yes, I am. I'm not trying to help you. You can be a hero here. I'm, you can. I'm far from a hero. But you can be. Because I'm a parent. You're a parent. Do not was, hurt a child. You're a parent who was left behind to deal with his stepson oh, and step kid. You had a problem. No, it's a problem when something like something like this happens. I've got a problem to take care of our children. Then what happened? That's not a problem. That's not a problem at all. Like for you to say that to someone, it's hurtful. That's what's hurtful. It's not a problem to take care of children. It's not a problem to take care of children, but bad things happen in the house all the time. In the house? No. Yes. No, no, sir. I mean, Jane, Don, no. No. Do you want me to walk through where all the blood was, or do you know it I already? Listen, sir. I don't. Mm -hmm. I know for a fact that I did not hurt Gannon. How is your, the bottom of your shoe have and Gannon's blood? I can, can live with that and know that God knows I did not hurt Gannon, then I'm okay with that. 
Well, you can convince yourself of that all day. Okay. But, sir, that's not helping me, sir. But is there a way for me to help you? Even okay. if you're trying to convince yourself it didn't happen, okay. is there some way for you to say mm -hmm. through a third party? Whatever you think, sir. I don't know what else to tell you, but I did not hurt you. Did not. Then you won't tell me who did. Would not. All that blood would not be in the house if Angel just I met would. him in a pet color. But you explain that's, that's far beyond what you're even talking about. What is far beyond? There's like many of times we've had blood in our house. Do you remember the spray that was on the wall? We goodness gracious. I've, I've seen the markers from the spray. The spray went from the bed all the way up here. Well, you had to clean it up. Smear? No, it's not a smear. Okay. Whatever. It's a spray. All right, sir. I don't know what you're talking about. Spray. I don't know what that means. It's called spray. I don't. I don't. I don't know anything about that. Well, okay. it, it comes from aspirated. You're going to hear all this anyway, so I'll tell you. It comes from aspirated blood. Okay. Do you know what that means? No. Nope. It means that he didn't accidentally do it. Okay. Okay. Whatever. Sir. Well, that's what we were waiting on for okay. the warrants because somebody struck Gannon in the bed. <laughs> in the no. If no. someone if someone struck Gannon in the bed, that's thank what God we we were all drugged then. If that's what if that's what you're saying happened. That's what the blood. God, we were all drugged. Well, then can you tell me how that blood got on the wall? Sir. That's Gannon's blood on the wall. Okay, well, I guess, sir, if you think you have all the answers, then. You're making me guess. I'm not. I'm not You've got the answers. I'm not making Tisha. you guess, sir. I just, I'm, not, I'm going to be respectful to you. Because you offered to help me. You didn't help me. So I'm just going to sit here and listen. So we've got it paused at 3 hours, 25 minutes, and 41 seconds. <clears throat> Mr. Grusing, um, this continuation of the discussion about Angel, was there any indication in the investigation that somebody by the name of Angel was involved in Gannon's disappearance? No. Uh, at the beginning, when you asked her for her being the defendant for a description of Angel, what did she say? She said that Angel looks a lot like herself. Do you remember the um, defendant saying that she had no motive to do this? Yes. Um, we're we're going to play that next. It's three hours, 26 minutes through three hours, 34 minutes. Uh, so about eight minutes, Judge. I don't know if you want him to stay up for eight minutes or not on the stand or not. Um, give me just a minute. Okay. One second. Um, you can... Do you want to stay there for the eight minutes or I'll go? <laughs> he, he's got a step skull, I think. <laughs> I've got it at three hours, 26 minutes, and zero seconds. So having skipped roughly 19 seconds, and then we're going to play through three hours, 34 minutes. If someone presents us with evidence, then we just follow the evidence. Okay. Right well, now, you're the last person with okay. Gannon. Then you, I don't do bad things to people. I don't. I don't think you do bad things okay. to people. I don't do bad things to anyone, and I didn't do anything bad to Gannon. I think something bad happened to Gannon, and I don't know of a way to get you to tell me about it. Okay. I tried through Al to get you to tell me about it. We've tried here. Okay. You came, and I think what... I think you have a defense mechanism. And I think your defense mechanism was you need to go into another room, you tell us. No, that was not no defense mechanism. I trusted you to talk to you because I thought you would If you help. trusted me to talk to me, you would tell me where Gannon is right now. I don't know. Do mm -hmm. you know where he last was and it wasn't at the code. Okay. okay then. But see, you can't make me guess. That's not, not fair to me. Why would I can't fair to Gannon. if you're not going to help me? You tell me how to help you. I already did. I already did tell you. I told you how you could help. And Nobody helps a kid like that. Okay, her. okay, that's what you think. No, it's, I'm just saying. Okay. If the sir. sun comes up in the morning and it goes down at night every okay. day, we have sir. worked 
hundreds of these things. Okay, so two things. Okay. Me talking to you is not going to do anything else because all you're going to do is go think that you're going to get me to say something that I did that I didn't do. That is not what I want. Because I did not do anything to Gannon. Why would I hurt our child at everything in the world? Why? I have no motive. None. Don't have the first motive. Everything I wanted in my life, I had it. Why? Doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense. A lot of the time, what happens inside yeah. of a house. And sir, I don't even know what you're talking about. I all I can tell you is, I don't know. No reason to. In fact, to go on the record, I had a way better relationship with Gannon than I did with Lana. Way better. We were so much alive. We, we always like the same thing. We always have problems with our stomach. We always do all these things. Do you know that there's almost a correlation sometimes between how much you get along with someone and how bad things happen in the house? I'm telling you that. I don't, you. I don't. Well, maybe bad things happen in your they house. Happen, they happen in the house a lot more than maybe, they do out of public. Maybe bad things happen in your house. But do you? Would it help if we showed you pictures of what we saw on the wall? And by the bed. When you, you say nothing bad happened, you can't get around. Yes, Al, but we did not show Al that on purpose. He had to come get stuff out of the house. Mm -hmm. And he looked and saw the blood pool was about this mm -hmm. big on the concrete. Okay. And that is what? not from a little gash like okay. that. Okay. And then what? And then you showed this to him, or how did no. he see this? He had to come get stuff out of the house. I wasn't even there that right. day. After. You allowed people to stay in this house for a week. I did not allow anybody to okay. do anything. Someone did. Okay, well, that's not my call. Okay. So So what I'm saying, though, is the wounds that you're describing okay. to him, even what? when you're saying what? it doesn't. Sir, I will tell you now. When you say the head thing was Saturday. The, what I will tell you now is people were inside of a home living, and it was not me. So maybe, maybe you can talk to whoever allowed people to live in the home, okay? Whatever you're saying that was done extra or whatever, maybe you can talk to those people who were allowed to stay in a home during this supposedly, okay? That's what I think. Maybe you can talk to people who were... You're saying that the injury that again happened... I'm not saying anything except I know you're telling me this stuff and you're saying this about, oh, how bad these were and these things were. All I can tell you is maybe you can talk to the people that were allowed to stay in the home during this time. During this time that you have this supposed evidence, people that were allowed to stay in the home and people that were allowed to walk in and out to see it, supposedly. Okay? So Gannon was in all these wounds happened after he went. I'm not saying anything other than. Sir, you are you are telling me you just sit here on record and telling me that Albert went inside somewhere that you were supposed to have as a supposed crime scene. I wasn't there for that. If you want, I can get an answer for you about no, who was no, with him. I, that's not what I'm asking you. I'm saying for you, you as a professional, you no. would have allowed that supposedly. If he has to go get stuff. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure that. As long as the scene had been processed. Okay, process. Sure. Okay. I'm sure, that's how, do that? I'm sure that's how it works in this country. Doesn't it sound a little bit weird to you? If the scene has been processed, okay. no. I had a girl that was burned alive in a house in Bailey. We scene don't realize. The scene was processed supposedly when people were still there day one, day two, day three, and the scene was processed. Day four, day five, day six. And the scene was processed. You're saying that people were going in and out of the house, civilians, while they were processing the scene. I'm, I'm asking you that because apparently That's you not. you said the scene was processed, and then there's you want me to talk to you when I know that how shady that whole situation is, and you want me to give you answers for how shady that is. So you need but, to tell me in the scene that was processed, day one, day two, day three, day four, there was nobody going in and out. There was people living there. Right. Okay. When they thought Gannon was still alive. Okay, living there. Okay, but you're saying the scene is processed because you, not you, but people surely were there 
It's all on camera that there was crime scene people there while people were living there. Of course, because they didn't know the severity of the scene. Okay. They just thought Gannon was a ran away, like you said, okay. to go see a so neighbor. So the point is, how am I supposed to put my trust and faith in any bit of the system like that when that was going on? How? So you're trying to put faith in a system. No, where you no I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm saying if you would have told police the very first night that he was taken forcibly, everything would have been different. That's not forcibly. Okay? I said exactly what I said, which was he didn't come back at 6 o'clock. If you would have said other people have him and they should not have him, it would have been different. You controlled the way that law enforcement responded. I did. So now it's my fault that they... Yes, by you saying he's going, walking in with, there, to play with a friend. Had people in there doing a supposed crime scene, and now you have all this stuff after you let people live there. And now you want to look at me and say something. Sir, I did not hurt Gannon. Okay? Okay, well, who did? Did not. Who did? Did not. Just like all why of these you, things. Why are you telling me you did not? I don't care if you did or not. I'm just Keisha. telling you. I guess you do care. No, I don't. Your father, you care. I care about Gannon. I don't care if you did it or not. <laughs> Sir, I didn't, okay? But you're saying you did it, but that doesn't help us find you. Okay, well, I didn't do it. I didn't do anything. I would not. Have no motive. No reason I'm not asking you about to hurt or your child. No reason. Who did? No reason. So we paused it at three hours, 34 minutes, Mr. Gibson. <laughs> Mr. Grusing, um, at the beginning you talked to or made a statement about a defense mechanism going into the other room. What was the purpose of you saying that? Well, defense mechanism or misdirection. I was trying to, you know, hone in on what happened that day. And neither I nor Special Agent Cohen found her story about Angel to be credible. This tangent that we're that we just witnessed happening where um you're trying to get her to give who hurt Gannon, right? That challenge of that. And then she's talking about the scene instead. What was your impression of that? It, it was another, yet another um, attempt to knock me off my line of questioning, another misdirection. As you can see, she's very effective at doing it. And um, I was telling her that the whole reason that law enforcement responded like they did was based on her initial report, but as she continues to talk over me and saying that because of the way she created Gannon just being at a friend's house, now that is a problem. It's, it's yet another big hurdle that I've got to overcome to get to what happened to Gannon. In that last clip that we played where it's the discussion about Angel, it, in some respects, did she actually revert back to Gannon is with a friend and didn't come home on time? Yes. So reverting back to the very original story that she told the police on January 27th. Right. Uh, that statement that she makes in this particular portion, um, she likes Gannon way more than Elena, than Lena. You remember that? Yes. Uh, when you went through those searches with her earlier in the interview, did you find any, or did you recount any searches, I should say, um, to the defendant about uh, involving stepdaughters or Lena specifically? No. Uh, in fact, um, you read to her some of those searches, one of them, I don't like my stepson. Correct. I don't like my stepson. Should I get a divorce? Yes. Did you ask her um, after this portion of the discussion about Quincy and Eduardo and the mountains? I did. What were you trying to get to there? Well, as you could see with this story, it didn't take her long to get off of Angel and then divert to other people being in the house. And I wanted to just address the other stories yet again. And again, where we are at this point is we're still trying to find clues about where Gannon is. Uh, and I had already explained to her that I think the closest she came to describing Gannon's injuries was uh, when she spoke about Quincy Brown. So I decided to go back there and give that a try. What do you mean by that, that the closest she was to describing 
uh, Gannon's true injuries was when she was talking about um, Quincy Brown. Tell me what you're talking about. Well, I never saw the full autopsy uh, and to, of what happened to Gannon. I only heard about it secondhand, but when she was describing uh, the head, the, the hands, the knees, and the blood uh, pouring, that's, that's the most descriptive. Uh, she, had come, she had come with us, with, with us meaning investigative team, even including here. So that was the, the most descriptive as far as any potential injuries that she was willing to tell the investigation? Correct. <clears throat> so we're at three hours, 34 minutes, and 50 seconds. We're going to play a five-minute clip, uh, three, two, three hours, 39 minutes, and 50 seconds. If you give me another name, I will chase that person. You've tried... You've Good tried afternoon. Eduardo in the house. You've tried Quincy Brown up in the mountains. Now you've tried Angel. I never said anything about the mountains. Yes, you did. You were supposed to ride a bike oh, up there in the mountains with Quincy oh, Brown. But in, I never all, told you that. You were. You said you knew I was in the room. I didn't say I knew you. I don't even know who well, you were. FBI. I never know who you were. I said I didn't never say FBI either. Not what I said. Law enforcement. No, I said I know someone is listening. That's my daughter be us. No, it could have been anybody. Uh, exactly. There's no there's no point of arguing that. You're not gonna help me. I think you could control this story by you control, you, well you you I'm are concerned about what other people think. I've been completely respectful to you. I have talked to you, I've been respectful to you, I've been kind to you. I did all these things to you. Because that was just that's who I am. So I was raised, wasn't raised to be bad to people. I don't think you're a bad person. But I think bad things happen all the time. I've seen it. Why bad things have to happen? Because an 11 year old boy is not home and he's not hanging out with somebody. Okay, sir. Okay. I'm glad that you think something so bad happens all the time. I'm sorry that you have to have this uh, shield up of nothing but no compassion. And all that. I'm sorry for that. I really am. But I, I have no reason, no reason, none, to hurt anyone in my family. None. None. Can you tell me why there's blood on the bottom of your shoes? Yeah, the bottom of what? Shoes. The shoes they recovered in the garage. In the garage? Or, or in the top of the washer or something. People were, did you think I didn't walk around in shoes? If with Gannon's blood on the bottom? What's that got to do with anything? It's, I've already get told you. We were outside unloading stuff. What has that got to do with anything? We are outside unloading my car. I mean, come on. That doesn't, that doesn't mean somebody's this bad person and done something wrong. That hurt? Come on. Something like that. Would hurt Gannon, innocent, loving, help me out more than any person in the household. More than Albert. More than anyone. Help me. Help me. Gannon's a bad kid. No, help me. You know how much you'd be helping me with everything, pulling everybody else with slack? Who did it? Gannon. Yeah, I think that's why this is so hard. Mm. You're right. It's hard. You're right. It's hard because I didn't hurt you. Okay. If you're not having help with me, that is hard too. Very hard. Knowing that right now, sitting at home, Gannon knowing the situation, you know what Gannon would do? He would wait on me anything I would ask him just to make sure I was okay. okay. Anything. I wouldn't doubt that. Oh, he would. Before even Albert would even do it, he would. If he was sitting here right now and needed anything from me, you need to ask him to do anything, he would do it. So there's no, there's no intention, motive, reasoning, nothing for him. Nothing to hurt him in any kind of way. None. Nada. You did say on the phone calls there was no premeditation involved. I, I mean, I was saying to Albert, like he was, 
if you're talking about when Albert was asking me that, mm-hmm. I was simply saying, because you were trying to get him or whoever was trying to get him to walk me down some pathway of whatever it may be, whatever that may be. Come on, sir. I don't I didn't wake up and be like, oh, my life changed today. That's not how it works in life. Bad people, whether you say do this or do that or do that or do this, they just do bad things no, to that's people. That's not necessarily true. Okay, well, I told you good people do bad things. I've seen it. Are you a good person? Yes. And you do bad things? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. But you have, if you had any key to telling us where Gannon is, you would tell it to us if you were a good person. Would you not? And so. So pausing it now at um, three hours, 39 minutes and 50 seconds. At the very beginning of this, uh, you said, if you give me another name, we'll chase that down. Have you ever tried to go back and count uh, the number of different versions of stories this defendant gave during the pendency of this investigation? No, I have not. Is it too many to count? I just haven't sat down and done it. It's quite a few. Um, And then variations of maybe like the Quincy Brown story has different branches of that story. Correct. Uh, the um, Eduardo story has different branches on that story. Yes. The Gannon was playing with a friend and didn't come home. Are there different branches to that story? Yes. Uh, and then we get the pregnant woman with a, a money in her belly story. Different story. Right. Uh, why did you tell her you don't think you're a bad person? What was the purpose of that? It's hard to get someone to talk about something bad if they think the person talking to them already thinks they're bad. Were you hoping that she would, that would maybe loosen her up and she would give you some information? Well, and yeah, I I think she did not intend for this, whatever the awful thing was that happened to Gannon to happen. That's what you were trying to get her to believe you were thinking? Yes. Okay. Were you actually thinking that? Yeah, we didn't, I didn't know how all this started as far as uh, I was only taking my role in this investigation. I was not the case agent. Uh, my role was just to speak with Leticia, take in as many facts as I could for these interviews. And so I was taking in what she was saying, and she was putting it back again to me with a foot injury on Saturday and now a head injury on Saturday. So we've got a progression of things happening. And I was just gathering from her what I can and passing it on to the investigative team. When you said those things, um, you obviously didn't have Gannon's body had not been recovered yet. That's correct. Hadn't heard anything about an autopsy and the number of injuries that he had suffered. Yes. Okay. Do you remember asking her um, right after this clip that we just saw about where did you last see Gannon? Yes. Why, Why did you want to go down that path? In my experience, uh, especially if you have a close relationship with someone who has disappeared, you are clearly able to articulate the last time that you saw that person. And so far in the phone calls with Al and even with my time, she has not said what that very last sighting of him was. Okay, and we're gonna jump to that section now. Three hours, 40 minutes and 59 seconds. And we're going to play it through three hours, 45 minutes, and five seconds. Yes. Your, your argument isn't going to work, Leticia. Argument about what? Your argument that somebody took him. You're not going to be able to tell that story. Okay. okay. If you help us today okay. find out where Gannon is, if you because okay. I have 100% confidence that you can tell me exactly where you last left Gannon. Okay. Now you're okay. accusing me. I'm just telling you what okay. the research shows, okay. what our investigation shows. Mm-hmm. It will look much better for you. I didn't do anything. So what do you want me to look better at? I didn't do Are anything. Are you going to tell me right now that the last place you saw Gannon was really him anything. getting into an I'm, Sir, I'm not going to say anything because you're not trying to help me. Finding Gannon would help you. Oh, yeah, I know. Don't Wouldn't you it? think that? Then tell me. Don't you, you think that? Don't you, 
I know it. You really don't think that? So tell me where he is and let me help you. I don't know where he is. Where did you last see him? I'm not, sir. I'm not you. Prove that you were not going to help me. Okay, you did. You proved you were not going to help me. If you tell me where you last saw him, I can help you. I promise you that, Leticia. I don't don't get it. Then her again. I mean, I don't know how to, like, write that out, say it in 10 different languages. So what do you want me to say? You didn't hurt Gannon? Did you kill Gannon? No. No. Did you put Gannon somewhere? No. You didn't put him in a dumpster. Uh, dumpster? What? You put him in that hole with me? Because we've been tracking your car, we've been tracking, even when your phone is off, it can be tracked. Good, sir. I'm glad. And so we've, we've been going through dumpsters okay. all through. Is Thank Gannon you. in a dumpster? Sir, you can go through Just please. whatever that, you that want to go That would save through. us. Sir. That would save us I didn't hundreds of days. Just tell I me if he's in a dumpster. Anything. That's fine. But okay. will you tell me if he's in a dumpster? I, if I didn't do anything to him, how am I answering that question for you? Whether it's Angel or whoever I'm, else. I'm answering that question for you. Really? You are asking that. Because Sir. because we want to find him, Sir. I would not ask you that question I didn't if it wouldn't help us do find anything him. To be Nothing. Okay. Didn't hurt, harm, kill, nothing. Again. Did not. Would not. Where's the last place you saw him? Sir, Please. you've already asked me all these questions. All right, but that's an easy question. The last place you saw Gannon, which mm-hmm. can really help us find him. Why would you not say that? If you had nothing to do. Because I've already tried to help you. No, but if you had nothing to do, if you did not hurt, harm, anything, why would you not tell me the last place you saw him? Okay. Because it's a memory you don't want to look at. Memory? Yes. I would think it's a memory. Okay. Gannon's been missing now for how many days? You know when you last saw him, but you won't tell the one agency that can find him. You already said you already basically lost my whole ability That's not to a talk. true story. That's worse than Quincy okay. Brown. All right. Okay. Sir. What about the pregnant lady with the money in her okay. stomach? Sir. Okay. Leticia, tell me the last place you saw him, sir. and we can find Gannon, and you can – that will help you so much in this case. Oh. Yes, it will. Okay. What do you think is going to help you now? If I walk out of here and we haven't got a lead on how to find Gannon, mm-hmm. all you've got is the story of – the stuff on the wall, you've got the blood, you've got blood all over the house, you've okay. got blood on the bottom of your shoes, okay. and you've got about seven lives. Okay. If you help us find Gannon, that will help you tremendously. And yet you won't tell me. Why? Yes, I will. I've just told So we've got it now paused at the end of that section, three hours, 45 minutes, and five seconds. Why'd you throw out the dumpster? There had been searches in dumpsters, and at that point, since we had no leads, I was hoping maybe she could at least, I was being truthful there, saying, can you at least narrow our world on what we're searching at this point? Because we didn't have a lead on where Gannon was. Just And you were just trying to get that from her at that particular point? Yes. Do you remember uh, going from, from that discussion into asking her about any mental health issues that she was dealing with? Yes, I believe I asked her a second time after asking her initially. Right. Uh, and so that's what we're going to get into next. And that's at uh, timestamp three hours, 50 minutes, and 20 seconds. And it lasts for almost two minutes. So it goes to three hours, 52 minutes, and 18 seconds. So I'm starting it at three hours, 50 minutes, and 20 seconds. The one, not the one. Do you know if I asked you ahead of time if you're having anxiety or depression or stuff like that? Yes. Anxiety, depression, you know, any of those things. Because to be honest with you, that's it. Have you been? You said Gannon's been seeing counselors. Have you been seeing counselors? Or no? Right. About teaching. One time. Uh, maybe she did it too because she was going to give the emotional support animal. That's it. Yeah, it was the two times on base. 
and we talked about not wanting to be in teaching anymore and all that route. Stress on the job, that was what we talked about. You had searched a little bit on the suicide stuff. What suicide stuff? Or was that you or was that just random speech stroke? Suicide? Have you ever thought about suicide? Who? You. I'm not thinking about suicide. Just asking. What's a suicidal person might say? That's cool. Yeah, because I have someone in my family before that I that have said that to me, and I've looked up information. But that's not you. <laughs> wow. Take that. have things in their family go on too, you know, that you maybe want to look up and be like, oh. This is going on like you're doing the booth. So <clears throat> when you're um asking her about any mental health issues. Um, did she indicate basically only two times? Yes. And, and what was the reason that she was seeing this counselor? Counseling on the base regarding her teaching, I believe. Okay. When you left the room here, um, what, what, did, what were you doing? Uh, I believe she asked if she, want, if she could make a phone call, and plus I wanted to check with our team, so I wanted to see, you know, what was going on with them. Okay. When you came back in the room, did you start to ask her about uh, the board that was found with blood on it? Yes. Okay, we're going to jump to that. So we're at 3.55 in zero seconds. Um, that period of time in between, so when we stopped at 3.52.18 until when you're about to come back in the room at 3.55 in zero seconds, uh, was she just in the room by herself? Yes. Was she acting normal? Yes. Any concerning behavior from her? No. Okay, we're going to start, start it at 3.55 and go through uh, 4 hours, 6 minutes, and 11 seconds. So a little over 11 minutes. Thank you. At some point we'll ask you how many steps it takes to get back and forth.
the restroom or anything. Mm -hmm. if it, I just wanted to call to see that Harley got home. She did. Yeah, they talked with Harley, they talked with uh, Dee Dee, they talked with Laura. And there were search warrants that Laura's house, Dee Dee's house, your van. I think that's it. So, yeah, they, they got Harley back home. <laughs> Harley with Dee Dee? Yeah, because I told them that you, you know, I met you out of the car and you said you'd like Dee Dee to be the guardian in, in between time. Okay. Well, um, I, why, why are you supposed to be in house? I mean, because you stayed there. I mean, I'm saying like they're not in trouble, are they? No, neither are Dee Dee. I'm not asking you for a long procedure. Mm -hmm. I do this now. And, and whether you did this or not, it doesn't matter. All, the reason they asked me is to come help find what happened again. And if I can't get past, you know, if I can't prove a story, whether you tell it to me, Al tells it to me, whether it's El Paso Sheriff's Office, and then I, I don't take anything as true until I can prove it. With all the evidence that they have, the reason why it took so long is the district attorney wanted to wait and wait and wait till they made sure they could win in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. And I've done nobody homicides before. They have more on this case than we do on most of them. Okay. I don't want you to be the the way you can help yourself out of this thing is to give us something, even though it's very you just said you have what you need, so why do. Do you, why do you need to keep asking me? Because you were the one that came up. But, but, but if you have what you need, why do you keep asking me? Like, because our goal is to find Gannon. Our goal is not to prosecute you. That is the district attorney's job. We're investigators. And like, you, like you've just seen, I do a poor job about half the time because I have to guess. Because as much as we tried to track you with your cars and your phones and whatever else, there are gaps. We do have, like I told you, the blood in the house. We do have the blood on, we have, you know, about the board that was thrown in the forest. Leticia. Oh, what? Oh. I'm sorry, say what? That's okay. The board that has Gannon's blood on it that was thrown in the forest. So I, uh, all right, so what? You got your DNA on it. Okay. But then how do you explain stuff like that and then turn around sir, and say, but sir, but then turn around and say, I don't know. Sir, I lived in the house with Gannon. I was Gannon's main caretaker. I wouldn't be surprised if everything I done didn't involve Gannon. I'm like, what? Oh, okay, but that board was from the house okay. and then it's up on by Highway 105. I've already explained to you about any kind of stuff that would have been from the foot. I've already told you that. And I don't know what you. But Dan I mean, didn't go throw it up there. Throw, okay, so now if someone threw it up there. So, so now someone threw it up there. Or dropped or whatever. <laughs> How did that board get up there? Sir, now you're going on about the well, board. Well, Leticia, I'm sorry. And Albert so, already called this, about this board. Because yeah. you were there, right? Yes. And the sock and all this stuff, right? The sock had nothing to do with it. Okay. That. But yeah, he said a thought. But he did say a thought. Right. right. But the board is true. Sir. The board was right where your T1 was. Sir. Pick one. Yeah. Yeah. Because we tracked it. I'm, you could have gotten all that from me easily. You just logged into the app. It's not a difficult thing. Like. Right. But if you track from where your T1 but now, went but and you look at where that T1, board went. Now, okay. So this is why it's so like backwards. So now my tig lawn, but I was driving a truck and then now my tig lawn and now the, I mean next and then you tried on the rental car but then No, you had three different cars. There's and proof from the rental car and I didn't even get to drive it. So I Right, mean, there's low mileage on it. But we don't know where you went because you had your phone on. Watch on. Yeah, but you had your phone but on. the phone but the but watch. the watch is up in the forest somewhere, isn't it? No, the watch you guys have your 
she said El Paso Detention Center. That's the watch there. I thought you had an eye watch. That is. That's where the watch was at. Okay. okay. My eye watch says it's clearly sitting in El Paso County. Okay. But your phone was off for a couple of days. A couple of days. The twenty seventh, it was off when you were at between the Petco's. But I had my watch on. Right. But what I'm saying watch tells you where you go. I mean, it's, yeah. it's mirrored. Yeah. But I'm telling you, we have holes in our investigation, and you can help us with that. Sure. I didn't even really drive my car anywhere, really, other than just going to meet friends. You uh, drove the Tico on up there. Yeah. Other than to meet friends, yes. So who were you meeting? What friends? That can be a lead we can help find Gannon mm -hmm. with. You you guys already know all my friends, so maybe. No, we don't know those up there. That should be the ones that you, you really know. We don't know the ones up there, I guarantee you. And like the guy said, oh, tire pressure and all this, then you would have saw where if I stopped anywhere or done whatever. Can't you tell me, though? Sir, instead of, you instead of making me. Though. I've already had to tell you. Everything personal about her life. You have everything personal. I don't have where you, what friends you saw up there on 105 where mm -hmm. that board is. But look, I'm not going to admit to any kind of board. I'm not saying you need to. I'm just saying tell me who your friends are up there and we can go talk to and them. And my line wasn't even driven that way until. Okay, like, so maybe it was the, I don't. Later. How much later? I don't even know. Before, you, before they took it. Okay, so was the truck up there? Up where? Up that 105 area. Oh, cool. Well, Castle Already said this. I was going to Castle Already said this. But is that where the board was? It was in the back Sir, of the truck. I don't truck. know where the board was at because I don't know. I really don't know. That's like you're asking me a question that I really don't know. So we, but we have a board okay. up there where you were driving. Okay. With Gannon's blood on it. Okay. With your DNA on it. Okay. So, so my DNA, which would be what? Skin cells. Okay, my skin cells, which I lived in the home, if that's what Correct. you're telling me. Yeah. And I've already told you that there was all this wood in the garage. Yeah, but you never angel. told me that you took a piece out of the truck and flung it up there. Or put it or flung it. And, and again, Leticia, I think Not you get that. mad when I, I say a verb or something, where you, whether you placed it, flung it, dropped it, hit it, I don't know. But sure. all I know is that our FBI evidence response team recovered it. Okay. Did you check everybody else in the house? As far as for their DNA? No, not the DNA to see if they put it there. Because you remember, these are the people that were in the house when I wasn't uh, when I wasn't there. Did you check all them? The people in the house. Yeah, did you, you check the people in the house? Since you mean the crime scene people? No, I mean the people that you... I'm sorry, I phrase that because you don't like me that... Allowed to stay there when all this stuff you're talking about would have been there. Okay? Correct. Did you check all these people? As far as their DNA? No. Did, did you check to see if any of them did this? Drove and threw that wood up there? Did you check them? Their GPS, their phone. No, 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 no. Did, did you check them? Because that is complete, doesn't matter. You So you mean to tell me you checked Veronica's GPS and her phone? Did not. Judge, that's uh, now paused at four hours, six minutes, and 11 seconds, and it's 4.49. Is this a good place for a break? It is, Judge. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will have our uh, weekend break. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we will have our weekend, oh, easy for me to say, we will have our weekend break. Uh, again, you must not communicate with others or among yourselves about the trial as it is going on. You must not do any independent investigation or research about the case. You must not discuss the case among yourselves in any way during the course of the trial. You may not discuss the case among yourselves until after you have heard all of the evidence and you begin to deliberate on a verdict. That'll be after the closing and instructions and all of that. In fairness, you must keep an open mind throughout the trial and you should reach your decision only during your deliberations at the end of the trial. Do not permit anyone else to discuss the case with you or near you. If anyone, in, including one of your fellow jurors, attempts to do so, report that fact immediately. Do not talk with any witnesses or with the defendant or with the attorneys in the case. You cannot talk to them and they cannot talk to you, even casually. 
You are permitted, however, to explain to family, friends, and employers that you are on a jury and inform them of how long the trial will last. You cannot say anything else about any aspect of your experience until you are released from jury service. Do not communicate about the case with anyone else in any way, including in person, by telephone, cell phone, computer, the internet, or any internet service. This means you must not email, text, instant message, tweet, blog, or post any information about this case or about your experience as a juror on this case on any website, list server, chat room, block, or website. You must not read, review, or accept any communications in any form from anyone regarding this case or cases like this. This applies whether you are here, at home, or, anyone, uh, or anywhere else. Do not read about this case in the newspapers or on the internet or listen to any radio or television broadcasts about the trial. The law even prohibits you from consulting a dictionary to clarify terms that may be used in this case. Um, with that, have a good weekend. Uh, enjoy the weekend. I don't think it's going to be as nice as it was last weekend. Uh, but it's Colorado. Just, just love it. Embrace it. So uh, we'll see you on Monday morning, uh, 9 o'clock. All rise for the jury, please. Thank you. May all be seated. Record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. Um, let's go through the uh, witness, or I'm sorry, the exhibit list um, for a moment. I have exhibits one through 43. Oh, nope, sorry. One through, yeah, that's right. One through 43. 46, through 103, 105, through 198, 201 through 211, 220. Just stop you if you don't have yep. jurisdiction. What? I'm sorry, 206 was, no, 206 was, it, it is in. It was introduced uh, through Mr. Stauk and then was uh, brought in through actually Harley Hunt, I think. Um, so let's go, let's see, um, 206 to 211, um, 220, 222 through 224, 226, 27, 28. 230 through 237, 239. Maybe what we should do, and the easier way to do this might be, I can show you what I have, because it's, what is it, 40 pages? 50 pages, sorry, 49. I can show you what I have. Uh, you guys can take a look at it, see where you agree or disagree. Um, and we also have Defendant's Exhibit A. That's the only exhibit I have uh, so far from defense. Does that sound right? right. Okay. Um, and then, um, so you can take a look at what it is that I have, who it is that I admitted it through, um, because I uh, tried to take uh, accurate notes on that. Um, and then, We'll see where there's a disagreement. Um, 
Is there anything else that we need to take up at this point in time? Prosecution? Defense. Um, what does next week look like? And I suppose primarily when are we anticipating Dr. Gray's testimony? So obviously it's going to depend on witnesses ahead of that, but. I didn't know if he was, if you were going to try and sandwich him in somewhere, or if he was last or what. Well, the debate for us is either Dr. Gray or Torres judge. Um, so okay. it'd be one of those two. And it's at least as we're tentatively looking at that, it'd be Wednesday morning. Okay. We do have, um, just so the courts are aware, we do have some witnesses that are going to be flying in from the East Coast. Three of them, as a matter of fact, and that's going to require some uh, massaging of our presentation of these witnesses. Okay. And we've also got a witness flying in from Hawaii as well. So that's okay. Dr. Grimmett. Okay. Well, we will work around whatever it is that we need to work around. I was just trying to get uh, some idea then. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see everybody on Monday morning then. Okay. Thank you. Court will be in recess. Thank you.